Welcome to the Tecmo Gaming Classic here in the IX Center in Cleveland. We have got the Silver Bracket Finals, Brian Adams versus Trevor Buxar. Trevor Buxar was in the Silver Finals last year against me, Ryan, the ultimate weapon here on the broadcast team, talking with you with Romel from 216 Sports Network. We appreciate them broadcasting here for us today. What is up, everybody? It is great to be here here at the Cleveland Gaming Classic. And we got a good show for you, as we both know, Tugboat, as he's, uh, what is, what's the word I'm looking for? Brian Adams' uh, nickname is Tugboat. Trevor, Trevor, what nickname would you like to go by today? Well, he's Team Money on the Team Money, so all right. We, and all right, the matchup, here we go. The matchup is, the Chiefs matchup is Pittsburgh. Chiefs Pittsburgh. All right, Steelers Chiefs is the matchup call. Interesting call here for the first semifinals game. Trevor does have to win two games. Brian coming through on the undefeated side of the silver bracket. Trevor working his way. Yep, you're good to start. Trevor working his way back from the one loss side. So here we go. The captains meet at midfield. It's going to be Steve DeBerg on the left and Rod Woods are on the right Bubby and Rod Brister. Woodson on the left. Bubby Brewster. I we remember can tell. No, we can tell from the numbers there on the field who the captains were. So here's the kickoff <laughs> with Nick Lowry. Wow, right from the middle of the Tecmo logo. Here we go in the Silver Finals. It's deep in the end Mike zone. Mike Mularkey is going to take it out. He's at the 5-yard line. He takes it to the 10. He dances around and he makes it to the 11-yard line. Steelers first and 10 here at the 11. Bobby Brister is going to come out in the run and shoot formation. He's going to pitch it to the bottom to Worley. He's got blocking in front. And Worley is going to get dropped after about a four-yard loss. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even remember Worley being on the team for real back then. <laughs> like, like, just think about that, how old this game is. Right. Well, he just dropped a pass there. So here well, we are already at third and six. He didn't have any hands. <laughs> He was, he was decent so, coming out of the back. So the Steelers in the I formation, it's an all-out blitz. Hodge looking for Hodge. Dumps it. He gets it to Hodge, but he's, but he's short. Fourth and one, big decision here for Team Money. He's debating. He's on his own side of the field, fourth and one. Most Tecmo players like to go for it if it's fourth and four or less. He's going to go for it. Brister in the shotgun, drops back, looking, looking, looking. Could he call his own number and run with his leg? No, he's going to go for Louis Lips. He's got oh, Louis he's Lips. It. Diving reception down the field at the 45-yard line. Nice Team Money with a big play. Nice play. That was awesome. All right, here we go. Bubby Brister run up the middle here. Hands it off to Worley. Bounces it outside. Back into the thick of that Chiefs defense. Breaks a tackle. Picks up five yards, second and five. I got to tell you, that play with Lips was just awesome. because you don't. That was very exciting. Here we go. Right back up the middle with Merrill Hodge. And he gets the first down with Merrill. And this ground and pound Steelers offense picks up another first down. You wonder what would have happened with the Steelers if Merrill doesn't hurt his neck. Here's Brister out of the shotgun. He's got lots of time. Now he's got someone in his face. He's going to let it rip. He's going deep down the field looking for Louis Lips again. Oh, and it's afflicted in the end zone. Incomplete. Second and ten. Remember, the Chiefs had actually a, a very good defense back then. They just couldn't very get over defense. the hump. Derek Thomas, who once had eight sacks in an NFL game. Here we go. Hill on the bottom passing away for a first down. And now we're in the red zone. Yeah, the Chiefs is on kryptonite with Steve DeBerg. Bobby Brister in the T formation, hands it off to Worley. He bounces outside, bounces it back towards the middle. Tim Worley in, got people chasing him, and he's going to get run down after a two-yard gain. He did a lot of running there, Romel, for a short amount of yards. Man, it's Worley, man. Worley. All right, here we got a pitch to Worley at the bottom. He's got some blocking in front, yep. and he's met immediately by a group of red shirts, and they didn't look very happy. And Third and five. And that's the thing that bothered me about this particular Steelers team. No blocking for the running backs. Brister drops back. He's low. Oh, he gets yeah, up. Misses it. Sack. He got sack it open. And he completes it to Tim Worley. Worley. He's for, in. For touchdown. All, for all hey, of the insults Tim Worley took here in the first quarter in the broadcast from Ramel. He says, I'll show you, Ramel, and I'm going to take it in for the score from Bubby. 6 nothing. extra point pending. Kick. The kick is up. And it, it is, is good. good. Oh, wow. So Steelers. Team Money with a 7-0 lead. lead. Can you believe it? The Steelers definitely the underdog here in this matchup. Anderson kicking to Barry Ward deep in his own head zone. Again, Brian has to lose twice. Barry Ward takes it out. And that's a, a great yards. advantage for, for Tugboat to be, be in a situation where he has to be beaten twice in order to, to yep. lose. Absolutely. The Chiefs, Chiefs come out in the shifting and one step. And Akoye breaks the tackle up the middle like a battering ram. There goes Christian Akoye in the open field. Oh, and he fumbles it. Akoye and the Steelers pick it up. David Little. David Little punched it out of Akoye's grasp. And the Steelers have a turnover. Up seven points. Unbelievable. 
Bobby Here's Brister, all out blitz, dumps it to Hodge. Hodge at the bottom of the screen, takes it to the 30. And that is the end of an exciting first quarter here in the semifinals. Second quarter underway, Bubby Brister drops back in the shotgun. He's got lots of time. He's looking down the field. He's going to dump it to Worley and pick up nothing. Nothing. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Third and 10. Steelers in plus territory in field goal range. Brister comes out in the T, T formation, drops back, looking, looking, he looking. He take it if he wanted to. And he's going to let it rip, and he's looking for green, and it's incomplete into double coverage. Fourth and 10. Now Steelers trying to go up by 10 points here. The kick is up. Ooh, oh, just, just a narrow it. miss there by Derek Thomas. Go. Oh, and he missed right, it. Right. No good. Unbelievable. A chance to go up. Well, that's a big break for Tugboat and the Chiefs here. DeBurk comes out in the run and shoot. He pitches Quay it to Quay right back to the horse. And Quay gets dropped after a one-yard gain. Second and nine. Back to the shifting one setback formation. Aquay bounces it towards the bottom of the screen. Great oh, what a tackle by Carnell tackle. Lake. Wow. And Carnell Lake was a short tackler in real life, so <laughs> you're not getting out of too many hits with him. DeBerg dropping, looking, looking. Oh, he gets tied up. up. And he's sacked by David, David Little. Little. That is David Little's second big play of the game. He stripped Aquay earlier and came up with a turnover, and now he gets the sack. Brian Barker for the punt. I got to be honest with you. I've never seen Tugboat in a situation like this. He's a back is against the ropes for sure. Michael Malarkey is going to take this kick, and he's going to get dropped at the 12. This, this is the type of game I think T-Money wanted to put put uh, Tugboat in an uncomfortable situation. Up the middle, Worley. Worley. Ooh, it picks Worley up 11. was never that fast. Well, it was never that fast. He's gashing this Chiefs defense. Here we go in a Between shotgun. Between him and Hodge, it's got to be. First down. Brister looking. He's got lots of time. Now he's got somebody in his face. He lets it go in time. Looking deep down the sideline for Lips. Incomplete. And unbelievable that Brister never had that kind of arm in real life. <laughs> well, we a wasted of, a draft pick on Bubby Brister. A lot of players in Tecmo had arms they didn't have in real life. Here's Brister looking. As a Steelers fan, Brister dropping, didn't dropping, have looking that arm for Lips again. Life. And it's incomplete. So he's connected with Lips once. And so far he. Could have been a touchdown. Could have been a touchdown. So far. The Chiefs have had him on lockdown. Okay, here we go. Worley with blocking in front. Worley cutting it's, it to about the 30. It's Hodge. With, it's Hodge. I, I'm looking at it now. It's Hodge not picking up where Tugboat's going as a defender. So here we go. Straczynski punts it. Barry Word back on his own side of the field. Will nice he drop punt. it in? Oh, no. He drops it into the end zone. So it's going to be a touchback. Great punt. Very close to being dropped inside the one there. That's still a great change in field position. It is Don't a great want to change in field money. position. The Steelers defense has position. been playing very well. Content to punt it away to the Chiefs. DeBerg, DeBerg looking, dropping back. back. He's looking for Stephon Page. Deep down the field. Stephon Page. Can he pull it in? It's he intercepted. It. it is intercepted into oh, no, double late. coverage. And he breaks another tackle. He's down the sideline. 24 seconds. Tick, 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 remaining here in the first half. The Steelers are going to get a chance for a long ball throw or try to get into a long field goal. Brister in the I formation. He's pass got a man open. Oh, oh he gets away. He's got a he's man got open. Time. He's got a man open. He's looking for Three, Hill. Two. There he is. Oh, no, he's running he's out of time. time. Drew Hill, can he score? He's so slow. He's at the 10, the 5. He got in. Wow, Steelers. Touchdown, Derek Hill. Just bef at the buzzer for halftime. Wow. Bubby Brister looks like gold today. Looking back on that replay, Bubby Brister giving the stiff arm to Derek Thomas, buying himself some time and hitting the long bomb down the field right before the half. That is an awesome, awesome play by Brister. Tugboat gets the ball to start the second half. Anderson kicks it deep to Word. Word deep back in his own end zone, takes it out. Word's at the 5. He's at the 10. He gets downed at the 10. So let's see if the Chiefs can mount a comeback here. They start in the shifting one setback formation. They're going to give it to Okoye towards the bottom. Okoye makes move. a man miss. Okoye back towards the middle of the He's field. Still on his there feet. he goes. He's going. He gets out of bounds. Great move. At about the 34-yard line. Nice run to start the drive there by Christian Okoye, the Nigerian nightmare. Now it's a pitch up top to Okoye. Okoye has a lot of angry black one. and gold shirts there. You got to stop Okoye because you know if Okoye is at 100%, Second and no nine. Bringing him down. DeBerg's got plenty of people open. And he dumps it to Okoye. Yep, gets out he of gets bounds. It to I like Tugboat's strategy here. He's getting Okoye the ball, and now he's getting out of bounds to stop the clock. That's yep. what you want. 
Well, this drive has been all Okoye so far, either running or catching. And that time they make it to midfield. So here we go. Chiefs down 14-0. DeBerg drops back in the eye, and now it's another pitch to Okoye up top this time. He's looking for room. He tries to cut it back towards the middle, third and three. Big third down here for the Chiefs, who are now in plus territory. DeBerg drops back. He's looking. He's got lots of choices. He hesitates. He's now got three men in his face. He's going to let it rip. DeBerg this looking for big. Rob Thomas. Oh, oh my! Just out it wasn't 3 a.m. today, to although Rob Thomas was very lonely down there. And He's Rob not going to come up with that pick. Down with that. Imagine what that would have done for momentum. It would have. And here we go. A all oh, and there's my. a change of sides to the Steelers. Defense to stairs. stop on oh. fourth down. I, oh, man, this is, this is exciting. Here we go. Brister going to hand it off to Worley up the middle. They come out in the run and shoot. Derek Thomas on defense, controlled by Tugboat. Worley looking towards the top, looking for blockers. He gets it. Worley gets another first down. Man, and that's the beauty of T-Money strategy, getting first downs to keep keep that defense on the field. The it's change. all out blitz. Here we go. It's an all out blitz, but he gets Hodge it off gets the it. Hodge on the emergency gets, dump route. He gets eight on that or two Second on Second and eight. This is awesome, man. This, this is the kind of game you want at this kind Here of Here we go. Up the middle to Worley. Bounces it towards the Fumble. Oh, it's a fumble. Who's going to pick it up? Recovered by the Chiefs, Kevin Ross. Ross Here we got, go, Ross. He's picks got up some a room. block. I finally brought down. What so a big, 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 big play there for the Chiefs. What they really needed killer. that. And Kevin Ross came up with a huge turnover. Tugboat the Berg now up. looking, trying to capitalize, dropping back, looking, Tugboat looking for Paige. Big with Here he shakes a fumble. shot deep down the field. Can Paige come up with it? It's a double jump. He got it. He comes down with it. Here comes the touchdown. Safon Page. And the Chiefs are on the board. 14-6. Extra point pending. Tugboat with his back against the ropes. Connects on a long bomb to Stefan Page from DeBerg. And it's 14-7. Tugboat playing from behind. He's got he's got a quarter left. Let's see what he can do. seconds. Tick, 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 tick. Left in the third quarter. The Steelers trying to milk this clock. Get Malarkey. He's going to get it out to about the 16-yard line and drop there. Seven seconds remain. The Chiefs need another defensive stop or a turnover to make this a game. Tugboat's got a man, Derek Thomas. Bubby Brister looking back. He's got some options. He's looking for Hill. Derek Hill cannot come up with it. And that'll do it for the fourth quarter. In a very fast, fast-paced game here. Low-scoring game, as we expected. Two good defenses. Brister's going to hand it off up the middle to Hodge. Oh, and he's going to get dragged down from behind by Derek Thomas. Fortunately for Derek Thomas, horse collar tackles were not illegal back, back when then. Tecmo came out. <laughs> Here we go, Bubby Brister looking Got down. The field. He's looking for Derek Great Hill. Shot. He completes it. Another Great first down shot. for the Steelers. This ground and pound offense moving the chains. Team Money has lulled the Chiefs defense to sleep, running the ball and then passing when he needs He's going to pitch and it to Worley. Oh, he gets a block. Worley. He gets the first down. Another first Money down working by it. Tim Worley. Team Money is really working it tonight. He really is. He's mixing the run and pass well. Here's another pitch to Worley up top. And he's looking for blocking, and this time he's not going to get Three it. Three yards in a cloud of dust against Tugboat is not a bad strategy. As long as you're moving the ball forward, you if got something If he can get going. a field goal here, Ramel, it pretty much will ice the game. And they're very close to field goal range. Brister looking back. Oh, he's got four Chiefs in his face. Looking deep down the field for Lips. Oh, oh incomplete. Tip. Oh, my goodness. After the play, we saw jumping animation, which is very rare in Tecmo. Those glitches. Got to love them on Nintendo. All right, third and seven. Big play for the Steelers this here. It's a pitch huge. to Worley. He's got blocking in front. Worley, past midfield, and he, he is not going to get the first down. Decision he time is, here. He's going for a field goal. Well, you've got Derek Thomas running in on this field goal attempt. It is not a guarantee. The kick he's, is up. Derek's oh, he just missed, missed it. Missed it. He got it. T-Money connects. T-Money on, on the board with the field goal. By Gary goal. Anderson, 17-7. 17-7. Seven. Now, what can we see from Tugboat that will help us determine how this game one is going to go well he's got to get two scores so he's got to score quickly and he's got to get a field goal and a touchdown so you could argue that either one could come first obviously you'd rather have the touchdown he's definitely so got to get a stop gonna look. if he scores he's in his own end zone he's dropping back he's got lots of Steelers in his face he's looking for page deep down the field Stephon page Page and lake it's he's in double coverage but he doesn't pull that, it down that time that's a great matchup though page and lake is a great matchup you got to watch that well, Page is going to win his share of those, and you have to go for it at this point in the game. And Page has actually beat Cardinal Lake in this game. 
for a touchdown. Yeah, and T-Money will give up five-yard runs to Christian Aquay all day. The clock is not Tugboat's friend. Here we go, DeBerg dropping back, looking. He's in his own end zone. He's dropping back, going for Stepan Page for the money shot. Here we go. And he is no, incomplete and again. Fourth, fourth and down, the money the down. This is the game. Now, Tugboat does in his uh, have in his back pocket one more loss that he can give up. He has gone undefeated in the silver bracket. Here's Akoye to the bottom. He's going to try to get the first down. He's got the and first he's got down. It and he's more. got room. Christian Akoye. Now he's running a lot of clock now, here. Tugboat but he does, does have some timeouts. Down. 56 seconds remain. The Chiefs come out in the run and choose formation. I don't formation. think either team has used a timeout. We can see if they'll use him He's here. got one-on-one -on -one up top with Page, but he's got blitzers in his face. He's going to let it rip. This is going to be big. Looking for Stephon Page again, deep down the field. Here we go. Stephon he Page. Got he got it. it. Touchdown, Chiefs. Stephon Page. Touchdown, Kansas City. And there is still a pulse. They need an onside kick. Now, don't, don't. Don't discount that onside kick. That onside kick can be very detrimental. Player two onside kick. Odds in Tecmo are very low. Less than 8%. Here oh, we he go. got it. And he's Here's headed out of kick. bounds. And T Money's going to run it out of bounds. Yep, All he has to do is punt or just keep away from the Chiefs here for a few seconds. He's going to pitch it to Worley at the bottom and just stay and towards the sideline. He got out of smartly. bounds. I don't understand that one. Now he punts it well, to end the game. He's trying to stay close to the boundary to make sure, in case of a fumble, that the ball goes out of bounds, which is very smart. So here's the kick into the end zone. So T-Money takes game one, 17-14 Steelers over the Chiefs. So the next game will be for all the marbles. We'll see how that one plays out. We're going to coin toss flip again. Looking forward to broadcasting that one here momentarily yeah, with Ramel. Stick, stick with us. We'll be right back on that one. Great to be here with you, Ryan. You too. For those that are, for those watching at home, this is a – Cleveland Classic Gaming Convention here down at the IX Center with the Tecmo Tournament. This is the largest Tecmo Super Bowl tournament in Cleveland. Been going on for a decade now. Ryan started been a great in, part of it. Started in Tom Jenkins' basement many shout years ago. Tom. Yeah, shout out to Tom for doing this and turning it into the convention that it is now. I mean, now we've got Magic the Gathering. We've got arcade games. We've got vendors. We've got it's the Mortal Kombat crew here. We've got Tim Kistrow, Mr. NBA Jam himself. And if you can hear music in the background, it's actually the after party. It's starting. We ran a little over. Tom's gracious enough to let the Tecmo event run past the normal lot of time here at 6 p.m. And we, we are very gracious of that, so we thank him for it. This is a great turnout here, especially at this, tuck, this Tecmo tournament where Tugbo just lost, but he's got one more loss he can take before the trophy goes to T-Money. So while we're waiting here for the second coin toss and the determination of who wins, this is very reminiscent of last year's Silver Bracket Finals where I went undefeated in the Silver Bracket. T-Money came in, beat me the first game, and then our second game was extremely close. I got the better of him in that second game, but... And T-Money is a great competitor in the Tecmo world here in Cleveland. As guys like him, you, Tugboat... You just you got to bring your A game every time you pick up a controller. Lots for Lots of good Bowl. players here. Lots of good guys. I Here's still I still got to get a win over three of you guys. So, <laughs> we're, so at some point we're gonna have to figure something so out. So who won the toss? Trevor won the toss again. All right. So Trevor looking at the matchup. She trying to determine what he wants to call against Brian that he hasn't already called today. It's the one matchup once rule. Players cannot call the same matchup twice during the tournament. And that's a very good rule. So Trevor because... racking the sheet here in his brain, trying to figure out what matchup will be beneficial for him against Tugboat. And honestly, with the way the tiers are in this Cleveland version of the tournament, I'm surprised that the Steelers got away with this one. Steelers Chiefs is not a matchup you often see in Tecmo, but T-Money made it work. He really laid the wood to the Chiefs there defensively. Um, Tugboat had a tough time getting things going. Not as close as the final score indicated. Uh, Trevor really dominated that game for most of the game. Did make for exciting theater, though, at the end with that long touchdown. So T-Money has called Houston versus Giants. Brian, if Brian is taking the Giants. T-Money will take the Oilers. So this is a high-tier matchup in Tecmo. So we go from a middle-of-the-road matchup to a high-tier. And a very interesting one at that. The Oilers and the Giants are 
arguably two of the top four teams in the game. So this could be a high scoring affair. So T Money setting up his playbook right now. Now, for those of you that don't know the game, the Oilers really don't have much of a running game. And the rules in Tecmo Cleveland prohibit wide receiver at running back. So you can't take one of the top four wide receivers on the Oilers and put them at running back. So no Drew Hill, no Ernest Givens at running back. You're limited to options like Alan Pinkett, um, Victor Lloyd, uh, Victor Jones, excuse me, Doug Lloyd. So there's not great options at running back. The Oilers are mostly a passing team. The Giants are a little more balanced. They've got a nice combination in the backfield of Megan and Anderson. They've got some nice receivers with Stephen Baker, the touchdown maker, Mark Ingram, and, and again, Mark Bavaro with tight end. And you're right. But I do think that T-Money will have a slight advantage given that he's got one of the most accurate passers at that time of the era in Warren Moon. So because he has Warren Moon as a – quarterback slash gunslinger, this may actually benefit him. Excellent point, Romel. And as I mentioned, the Oilers have four of the top ten wide receivers in the game, all on the same team. Drew Hill and Ernest Givens being the top two of those options. There we go. So here we go. A coin toss at midfield. Looks like they threw Jeff Hostetler a bone and let him be the captain for the game, even oh, though he's the man. backup quarterback. Hey, Jeff's got a Super Bowl, man. Go easy on him. Jeff, Jeff he has sucked a... with the Raiders, but give him a, give him a pass with the Giants. And the right, game is go. underway, kicking them little Megat. The day Hosta Megat. Megat takes it out of the sea in Tecmo in the end zone. He's yeah, going to go to the 10. That. Megat, get out of bounds. Megat did have some fumble issues with the Giants at one time, so that's going to be something we got to watch as well. Interesting playbook here with Brian. He's got Megat on all four runs. No Otis Anderson back there, who's one of the top ten running backs in the game. Megat the better receiving back. But, and that's what, that might be something you need to his strategy. You got to get Megat the ball. Here we go. Shifting one step back. Sims going to hand it off to Megat up the middle. And lots of blue blocks trying to meet somebody. Gets he's away. Megat. Meg he's going to zig and zag. He's at the 40. He's at the 45. The 50. Out, out of bounds. bounds. Way to go. Tugboat. Just short of midfield. So here the Giants come out in the run and shoot formation. He's going to pitch it up top to Megat. Megat. Megat oh, fumbles. fumbles it. Can the, oh, it's recovered, recovered by, by the Giants. Giants. Elliot. John Elliott picks it up. He's at the 30. And he gets and out, of out of bounds. bounds. Avoid another fumble. Oh, big break there for the Giants. This is awesome. So here we go, shifting one setback. Phil Sims, he's going to hand it off to Megat up the gut. He's going to bounce it outside, and Megat's going to pick up. I got to ask you, Ryan, I got to ask you, you being a veteran of the game, do you trust Megat after he fumbles like that? I trust Megat. He's got good ball control. It was an aberration. I would keep giving it to him. I mean, yeah, it was bound to happen, but my thing is, with Megat fumbling against a team like this with the Oilers right. and their passing game, do you really want to – well, he was dancing a lot there behind the line. Not sure if we're watching Dancing with the Stars or a football game here, folks, but David Maya looking very fleet of feet there. Here we go. Phil Sims pitches it up to Megan up at the top. He Giants cuts it driving. back towards inside. He gets a block, but he runs into his own man. Right, he runs into a wall there in the middle of the field. Two minutes and five seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Nice drive here by the Giants, saved by John Elliott on the Megat fumble. He's going to hand it to Megan. He's going to go to the top. Megat. And Megat can get a first down inside the five. So if he gets to the three, Third he can get three. a fresh set of downs. Phil Sims in the run shoot. He pitches it up to Megat one more time. And Megat cannot. Megat, oh, he, he does, does get away. Does but he, he get can't get away from the second throw. He does get the first he gets down. The first. He's got a fresh set. First and goal, Giants. And they have run almost the entire clock out on the first quarter. Oh, again to Megat up at the top. They are just hammering that play. And he's in. Touchdown, tugboat. And what happens when you take a sledgehammer on concrete, Ramel? It busts open. Eventually. It eventually breaks. And Dave Megan busts through the Oilers' defense like a sledgehammer. And the extra point is good. 7 nothing, Giants. Nice opening statement drive there by the Giants. That's what he needed. Tugged down he wasn't to his able last to do, life here. He wasn't able to do that with that Steelers defense breathing down his neck in game one. Game two, he's got a defense and an offense. And meanwhile, Gerald McNeil gets nailed immediately. So the Oilers are going to start in poor field position Well, here. let's look at it this way. They're going to start with Honestly, the run. Honestly, it's Gerald McNeil. McNeil was not the best returner. Right. Well, second and seven here for the Oilers. They come to the run and shoot. Warren Moon dropping back. He's looking. He's got a lot of time. He's waiting. He's looking for Ernest Givens. down deep. 
And it's, it's going to be deflected, knocked away there by LT. Of course, you got Lawrence Taylor in coverage. You got Lawrence Taylor on the line. How many Lawrence Taylors do you need Lawrence to avoid? Lawrence Taylor could play Pinkett. any position. And you see how fast he's moving. But there he goes avoids Pinkett. the tackle. Oh, he gets first the first down. down. And so that's Pinkett, the end of the first quarter. So Pinkett ran right towards Taylor, then cut it back towards the middle of the field and picked up a few extra yards and the first down. So now the Oilers are going to go to the shotgun formation. This is the bread and butter for the Oilers. Warren Moon waiting in the pocket. Oh, he's got someone in his face. Now he's going to dump it for and Lorenzo Watt. Right by White. And Lorenzo White Butterfingers White. I was going to say, White didn't one have the right through hands. his hands. He was a power runner, and when you're a power runner, you normally don't catch passes out of the back. Here we go. Warren Moon dropping back. He's looking down the field. Taylor and coverage circling. Now he's looking for Givens. Givens. And oh, no. The Giant, keep in mind, this is a Super Bowl of team. Right. This but is the 92 roster, so they won it in 91, I believe. Well, that was the matchup they wanted. They had Givens there on the bottom, one-on-one. -on -one. Now they're going for Jeffries on the bottom. Jeffries, Jeffries comes up with it. Diving catch. Hey, with Jeffries. Jeffries will catch a refrigerator if you get his head together. That man had some of the best hands not named Chris Carter. So T formation run up the middle for Pinkett. That play has worked really well for Trevor all day, especially with running backs that don't have a lot of speed. Both the Steelers and the Oilers kind of mirroring each other there with poor running games, but he's making something out of but nothing. But the good thing about this, I would say would be an advantage to T Money is that he has the better quarterback. Yeah, he certainly does. Warren Moon dropping back. Man at his face gets away. He looks, oh, and it's swatted away again by the Giants secondary. Giant secondary playing very well here. Fourth and six. The Oilers are going to attempt a long field goal. And Dejas, the kick is up. It's oh, blocked. it's blocked. LT came through. Who's going to pick it up? The Giants. Myron, Myron Guyton. Guyton. And the Giants take over in plus territory. So the Oilers have a struggle on their huge, hands. Huge, huge start here for the Giants. After that turnover there, Guyton picks it up. And now it's second Too and eight. Too bad for that the wasn't Giants. Taylor that picked up that block. We might be back talking to, a different back story. Back to the run and shoot. This time it's an all-out called play, and third and twelve here. So Trevor rebounding nicely, trying to hold them to a field goal attempt here early in the game. They come back to the run and shoot. It's a pass. Phil Sims looking. He's got some options. He's going to dump it short. That's he gets Anderson. it to Otis Anderson. Anderson Anderson's has a first down and more. Can He's he at score? the ten, the five. Oh, he gets out of bounds at the six. Out at the six. First and seven here for the Giants. Big play there for the Giants. That was a great play. Shifting one setback. It's, it's all an all-out all called play. Ooh, he loses two on that one. Second and seven. One minute, 42 seconds left here in the first half. Giants trying to punch it in again. Phil Sims hands it off to Meggett. Meggett. Meggett up the middle. He and takes it in. in. Touchdown. For the touchdown, David Meggett. And he's going to spike it for authority there. Classic celebration. Giants go up 13-0. Got to tell you. Old school football games have the best celebrations. They certainly do. And Tug is going to go up 14 0 here. So after losing game one of the finals, knowing he had that extra life in his pocket, he redeemed making himself. the most of himself so far. Up 14 0. One minute and McNeil. 17 seconds. But you can never count out the Oilers hitting a long bomb here before halftime, Ramel. With Warren Moon, I would not discount that. So they're going to go to the shotgun. We're dropping. Oh, it's an all out blitz. Looking for Jeffries. And Jeffries can't come up with that one. Unfortunately. Incomplete. And Jeffries is a master in real life at that time, a master of the diving catch. Second and ten. Moon looking back. He's in his own end zone, dropping back. Now he's got people in his face looking for Givens deep down the sideline. And he incomplete, swatted away there by the bottom DB. Now, third and ten. With 32 seconds left to go, I have to ask you, what's going to happen? Or what, what do you think T-Money's strategy is going to well, be? Well, I think he should run half. as much time off the clock as he is here right now and throw it deep, and hopefully that ends the half. Here we go, Drew Hill. Oh, he gets it. Can he get out of bounds? No, he can't. No, he can't. Can he and break a tackle? Done. He cannot. He's down. Perfect so play the call there, quarter. but Drew Hill could not get far enough down the field to score. 14 nothing. The fortunate thing for the Oilers is they do get the ball here after the half. Now, what is your second half strategy if you're team money in the Oilers? Well, the Oilers are a passing team, and honestly, they could easily get right back into this game with a couple of long bombs. They just have to hit them. We'll see if Warren Moon can do that. Moon drops back. He's got some rush in his face. He lets it go for Drew Hill, his best receiver. Drew Hill, incomplete. Covered by Lawrence Taylor. And saying Drew Hill is the best receiver is no uh, slight at Haywood and uh, Givens. They are excellent players in their own right. And that's what actually helped Warren Moon in real life with the Oilers. He had the best receiving core in the NFL, hands down. So here we go, Moon. It's the 
I formation pass play. He's looking down for Givens here at the bottom of the screen. Givens incomplete. Oh, just through Into the triple hands coverage. Davis. Fourth and seven. So Trevor makes a painful decision here to punt in his own side of the field. And he's going to try to play defense here against Doug. Now, he played defense really but, well. But, but, Megat's at return. You know Megat was a great return man. So here we go with Megat. He's, he's at the yards. 20, the 25. Gets out of bounds. Out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Good starting field position here for the Giants. Phil Sims in the run and shoot. Back to Megat. That money play they used at the top. The run and shoot pitch to the top. And he's Megat got a block. picks up more yards. He does get one block. Tosses one defender like a rag doll. And it's first and ten. Megat has redeemed himself from fumbling earlier in the game. So the Giants moving the ball towards midfield here. It's got blocking in front. Cuts it back towards the middle of the field. Loses a yard. Second and 11. So it's back to the shifting one setback formation here for the Giants. It's a handoff up the middle to Megan who bounces it up towards the top. And he gets absolutely nailed. I got to ask. Would play action work against this defense in this, in this situation? So... If you use Ray Childress at the bottom of the screen there, that fourth linebacker down, he can really blow up a lot of those runs. I've noticed Trevor has not been using Childress a lot during this game. Um, but that's easy for us to say. We're sitting in the booth. We're not playing the game. You're absolutely right. Decisions have to be made at some point, and sometimes you make the bad ones. So here or we sometimes go. Sometimes you don't even think about but it at even, all. Even so, he forces the punt. Landetta kicks it into the end zone to McNeil. Still a great change in field position. So it's third quarter, one minute and 26 seconds left here. This is for all the marbles. The Oilers get the ball. They're dropping back. They're looking. They're going to go for a. They're going to dump it short here Pink to pick it. it. Pink it gets it. And the one thing I've noticed about T Money that he does very well is he uses his receivers and out, his uh, running backs out of the back. He's very patient. So he's got no rush in his face. Warren Moon, he's got time. Here's Givens. Here's Givens deep down the field again. Givens oh, got Givens it. is going to jump and catch this and pull it down. Givens and makes one defender bounds. dive and gets Great out of bounds. Move. So right away, the Oilers are now in far plus territory on the Giants' side. Now they're going to pitch it to Pinkett. They're going to call run. Pinkett looking for blocks. He, he picks up seven yards. Out. Excellent gain there for the Oilers' running backs. Now they're going back to the ground again. Pink up. This is white. I'm sorry. Up the middle. He bounces it back outside. He's going to bounce it back and get the first down. Got to be careful with Lorenzo White, though. He has a tendency to fumble. First and 10. And it's the third quarter, so he's still got a back little Back to life. the T formation here. T formation for T Money. Up the middle. Pink it. Bounces it to the bottom of the screen. Pink it. Can makes he, one man miss. Ah, it's the end of the third quarter. But can he and get the first down? And it's second and four. Down? Six yard gain. He can get a first down inside the 10. Lots of time here. The Oilers need to score and play good defense. So we'll see if they can get in the end zone. Pinkett, pitch up towards the top. Pinkett. He gets a block. He's, He's going in. into his end zone. Allen Pinkett, touchdown, Oilers. Now, do and you just kick like it, that. Or do you onside kick it? No. There's, there's, in my opinion, there's too much time left in the game. T Money has played excellent defense. I don't think this is the time for the onside kick. And he agrees. Zendejas kicks it deep to Megat. And Zendejas has a leg. So, Maggot's going to take it right out of the sea in the middle of Tecmo there in the end zone. Maggot towards the top of the screen. He's at the 10, the 12, out of bounds. And it's condition check time here. Phil Sims in average. And Otis Anderson in bad. Mark Bavaro in good. Maybe that's why he put Maggot in. Well, you could say that now, but at the beginning of the game, the conditions would all be even, but... I'm just interested in, wonder, in knowing what the strategy was behind that. I, the only thing I could think of as far as running back strategy with that is the fact that Megan is the faster back. He does have the better hands. Right. And you can use him out of the backfield as a fifth or sixth wide receiver, depending on. Although we did see him cough it up earlier, and the Giants were fortunate to recover. But he it. has redeemed himself. He has. And there's Megan, as you speak, going, pulling off, ripping off a big run there for about 15 yards, first and 10. And that's, that's, what, you, that's what you do to keep the clock going. Back to the shifting one setback formation. This is a handoff towards the bottom to Megan. And Megan tosses tackle. one defender, but it doesn't. Caught. Only gets a yard. Second and six. Back to the run and shoot. Sims. He's pitching towards the top. It's a cold play. So T Money coming up big there. Third and six. Big big play here for Tug. The Giants go to the run and shoot. It's a pass. T Money looking, dropping. He takes See, off what's with he Sims. Do? Sims is going to try to pick it up himself with his legs, and he gets it. Sims not the fastest quarterback in in Tecmo Super Bowl history, but he he took a big shot there at the end. We'll he, see if Phil Sims looks a little woozy after getting up, but well, he, they might he just got to hand it off hand now. It off, so he does good to hand it off after that run. 
Big hit. Phil Sims takes it like a champ. Here we go. Maggot towards the top of the screen. Makes a man miss. Maggot gets oh, he the got block. Got on the bounce. Blue. Maggot. He's at the 30, the 25, the 20, the 15. He's in. Oh, oh he's out of, bounds. out of bounds. That's a new one. So if the Giants turn it over here, they may rue that. But set, Oh, he's a pitch up to the top to Maggot. That has in. been the money Touchdown play all Giants. day long for the Giants. And David Maggot takes it in again for the score. So with double so elimination, Tug, is this the end for T-Money if he cannot come back? So Tug looking very good here. Up two scores, two minutes and 15 seconds left. Trevor's going to have to air it out and hope for an immediate touchdown and an onside kick just to get it to overtime. So this one is for all the marbles. So here we go. McNeil taking it out of his own end zone. He's going to get it back to the – oh, it's fumbled. Oh, it's Who fumbled. Picks it up? Who picks it up? It's in the end zone. And oh, it's recovered by, by the Giants. Giants. And that is definitely going to put the nail in the coffin. And this game is officially. Lawrence Taylor. Of course. Why are we not surprised? Lawrence Taylor is everywhere today. This is one of those games where it, it's been the Lawrence Taylor game. So great run here today by Team Money, who really had his back against the wall in the latter portion of the silver bracket. He lost his first game early. Had his back up against the wall, made a great run, made it all the way to the final. So second year in a row, T Money making it all the way to the silver bracket and final. As so, I said earlier, T Money is one of those competitors you just have to keep an eye on every year at this tournament. Tip of the cap to T Money here. He's just going for at this point, looking for the garbage touchdown here to Hill. Much love to T Money. Yeah, much love. Yeah, T Money was and, another and great T -Money run. T Money was rocking the, the Eric Metcalf jersey today. He was. And a tip of the cap to Tug, who had a nice run all day, made it all the way to the finals in the silver bracket. Only loss in the silver bracket was to Team Money and that, in that that's, last that's, game. That's the competitiveness between these two. We've, we've seen them in, the, in games before, and, and now, again. And that's going to do it. Brian Adams, your silver bracket champion for the Cleveland Gaming Classic 2023. Congratulations to Tugboat. Whoop, whoop. That was a great strategy in game one by T-Money to pick Pittsburgh versus Kansas City. So Ramel and I are going to take a little break here with 216 Sports, and we will be right back shortly with the semifinals in the gold brackets and the finals. And I'm excited. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Cleveland Gaming Classic 2023 in the IX Center. I'm joined in the booth by Tim O'Donnell, also known as Disciple, here for the semifinals for the gold brackets. How are you doing, Ryan? Doing great, Tim. Thanks for being up here in the booth. Tim's looking forward to providing some great color commentary and analytics during the game. So we've got Fast Ed on the right side of the screen. He's got the Pittsburgh Steelers versus Nostradamus, who has Tampa Bay on the left side of the screen. Now, Nostradamus can out-tap Tampa uh, can out tap fast Ed. Something to much watch during the game. Every single time they're going to get engaged, Nostradamus is going to easily throw off or tackle fast Ed. So fast Ed has to play very, very careful when he goes to engage Nostradamus. Interesting insight there, and it could be something to do with why Fast Ed took the Steelers' defense with the drones. Yeah, he probably wants Tampa a lot Bay. of extra help on defense to corral uh, Nostradamus when he does out tap him which will throw him off, and then the extra defenders will help. So here we go with Christy to Malarkey. Malarkey takes it to the 20, out to the 21-yard line, first and 10 as we get started here in this the, exciting semifinal matchup. When you're the Steelers, you definitely want to get a good kick return because that's part of your offense. So we're going to start with a run. It's a called run, only one blocker there on the bottom of the screen. Yeah, and the reason why and, there's only one blocker is because the Nostradamus called a run play on defense, which sometimes makes that play RNG where only one guy blocks. So the Steelers quickly go now to the shotgun. Brister looking, dropping back, looking, thinking about using his own legs. Crossfield pass to Hodge. Hodge catches it. Hodge down towards the bottom of the screen, out of bounds, and a first down. Yeah, you got to get out of bounds on that. If it's a fumble, you lose a possession, you're in big trouble. Steelers right back to the pass. The red gun C passing play. Brister moving towards the top of the screen, looking, 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 and he's going to call his own number and pick up five yards yeah, with his legs. That was smart. Second and five is a lot easier. Yeah. Had an opportunity for a crossfield pass here, but a little difficult to pull the trigger with Wayne Haddock's patrolling in the secondary. Now Brister going to call his own number again yep. and pick up another first down here with his legs. First Easy first 10. down, smart play again. Don't want to throw it at Wayne Haddock's. will jump pick, snatch it every time. Right back to the red gun Z. Brister looking. He's got all day. A nice open pocket there, and he's going to take off again. Yep. 
three yards in a cloud of dust. The only time he got seven. three yards that time because Nosher was playing up a little bit. Brister comes out in the run and shoot, takes the snap under center, pitch up top to Williams. Williams cuts it back towards the bottom of the screen. Williams at the 50. He's at the 45, out of bounds. Third and two. Yeah, he likes those run plays at the top because then the blocker goes towards Wayne Haddix. Brister now takes a snap right outside the NFL emblem, pitches it to Wim Williams up at the top of the screen, and he's met by a bunch of orange creamsicle jerseys there, but does get the first down. Got the first down out of it. So here the Steelers come out. It's a pitch towards the top at Williams, takes the handoff there, yep. dancing around. Nostradamus took Robinson on defense because no one goes to block the DB3, the back safety on, on yeah, that Yeah, that formation. one setback formation play with the idea of isolating Haddix didn't work out that time. Nope. Williams now to the bottom of the screen. Contain third run three. And six. Very dangerous run play, even if you're Wayne Haddix, but if you contain it, then you big can stop play Pittsburgh. Here. Yeah, big play here for the Steelers in plus territory. Third and six, Red Gun Z. This has been a good play for Ed so far today. Brister looking, and he's going to try to pick it up with Brister in his legs, and he's not going to quite get there. He's going to be just short. One too many times, but fourth and one. Let's see what he does here. Looks like he's going for it. It's first quarter. I don't blame him. Yep. Tough to settle for three when you're Pittsburgh. Yep. Here we go. Brister looking, dropping back. And he's going to look deep down the field for Lipsy Connects. Touchdown, Steelers. Yep. Nostradamus went for the aggressive play to go tackle the quarterback, but Bobby Brister wasn't having any of it. Quick touchdown strike. Fourth and one. Big, big play there. Playing chicken there with Haddix. Yeah, he's just hoping that Bobby Brister with his terrible pass control, 31 PC, or I I believe it's actually 25. If he overthrows it, then... That's a big beat defensive stop for Tampa Bay. Absolutely. He's got Cobb in here at kick return because of his 94 hit power, which will pop a lot of players, but against the Steelers' defense, which is who he has on, on, on coverage, is not going to pop very many players. So we'll see how the Buccaneers respond here. They're going to start off with a pitch towards the bottom and get immediately dropped. Five-yard loss. Fast Ed with the super aggressive DB2 defense running in on run three, making it. A very risky tackle if he gets bumped off, and it's going to be a potential Second and long 15. run. The Bucks bring out the Red Gun Z formation pass play of their own. Testaverde in his own end zone, dropping, looking. Oh, my, Gerald Williams. Good defense. With what a hit. Head. That was a good defense. Third and 17 on your own five is a pretty tough spot to be in. So Nostradamus back to the shotgun formation here. Third and 17. Oh, he's going he's for it. He's going for a long for pass it. here. He's going Carrier. to look for Carrier deep down the field. Here he goes. Carrier deep down the sideline. He, he pulls is it down. Carrier. Carrier with the, the dive. 20, the 15, he didn't the want 10, to engage him. The five. And Mark Carrier <laughs> is going to go all That's the way touchdown. in for the touchdown. And just like that, the Buccaneers get the equalizer. Yeah, good old Tecmo. He throw it 90 yards in the air. Perfect D by Fast Ed. But if he gets the jumper, there's nothing he can do about it. And as you mentioned earlier, Tim, he can be out tapped. So he had to try to so dive So he went there. for the dive so that way he he wouldn't get thrown off. You know, it's the only chance he really had, so it's a smart play. Even so exciting though. first quarter there. So Christie's going to kick it off to Malarkey, who's waiting in the back of his own end zone. Malarkey takes it out. He's at the goal line. Cuts down. Oh, wow. Ooh, bad Not good starting return. field position Five here Five yard for the line on the Steelers. <laughs> That's going to be tough. Yeah, we mentioned it earlier. you got to get a good return with the Steelers because it's really tough to move the ball with them. Their offense is awful. So we'll see what Fast Ed does here. Comes out in the run and shoot. He's going to pitch it up towards Williams yeah. at the top. Cuts it back towards the bottom. Williams at the 10. Nice run there on first seven down. Seven yards. yards. Pretty good on that run, but he got tackled in bounds. That's very dangerous in Tecmo. Second and three. The good thing to Steelers is they do have some ball control on the offense. Yes, they do. Which yeah, helps the ball slow control for a lot of the running backs. Strong defense there by Nostradamus. Just went in for the kill. It worked out for him. He almost got bumped off. but it... Third and two Steelers. Big play here early in the game. All knotted up at seven, four minutes and three seconds remaining in the second quarter. The Steelers are going to the run and shoot. And it's a, a run play. He's got blocking out in front. Uh, uh, he's going to pick up the first down and more. Off. Williams, he's at the 30, 35, and tackled at the 38-yard line. Nice run. Yeah, it's a pretty good run. A 38 run, uh, max speed running back is pretty difficult to get a long run with. So here we go to the shotgun formation, the Steelers. The playbook's very similar for these two teams. Brister now cross pass to Hodge. Hodge just trying to get out of bounds, yeah. and he gets it and a first down. Wisely gets out, good first down. Had to cover a deep guy and a short guy, which is impossible. Steelers creeping up towards midfield here. But a Brister right back to that shotgun play again that worked so well the last play. This time it's pretty well covered. 
And Brewster is going to go for Williams, who was open. Yeah, I was not expecting him to push there. He was expecting him to cover and just let Brewster get a couple yards, but he was playing super aggressive there. Well, the aggressiveness has paid off so far in the game. We'll see if it comes back to bite him later on. Here's a pitch towards the bottom. Williams takes it, looking for blocking. He gets it, goes to the outside to the 20, out of bounds at the 18-yard line. First and 10. He's running really good against Nosher right now. Let's see if this keeps up. So back to the red gun Z here. Brister takes it, and it's an all-out blitz. Brister dumping it short to Warren Williams. Williams just trying to get out of bounds. And yeah. Second and th 13 here, three-yard loss. Nice call there by Nostradamus. Oh, back-to-back. -back. Back. Another pick All play. All-out blitzes. Ruben Davis on the sack. Third and 19. That's not so there was where a little switch be. there. He put in uh, Strom, yep, Strom over Brister. Brister has a strong arm, but if you put it in Strom, and he can just kind of float it up, which gives you a chance on a long pass with Strom Steelers. has slightly better pass control as well. Oh, it's an all-out blitz again. He does get it to Williams. Williams making a dancing move there, <laughs> somehow making something fourth out of nothing. And fourth and two. That was impressive. Now, what does Fastad do here? Is he going to roll the dice again on fourth down? Is he going to kick a field goal? Fast Ed thinking it over. Yeah, no, sure. He's already picked his play, almost daring him to go for it. Looks like he's going to go for it. He is going to go for it. They come out in the run and shoot here. Could this be the sneak? Maybe Haddix on D. No, it's a pass. It is Brister looking. He's going for it. He's going to let it rip. He's going to go throw it towards the top of the screen for Lips. He's in for the touchdown, Pittsburgh Steelers. That is the second fourth down touchdown yep. for the Steelers in this half. Yeah, he's making Nostradamus have to pick. Is he going to He's going to go get Anderson the puts the extra point through it is 14 to throw. 7. Anderson's going to kick it off with 1 minute and 30 seconds left here. Cobb waiting in his own end zone to return it. Cobb takes it out of the end zone. He's at the 5, he's at the 10, dancing back and dropped at the 10. First and 10. So long way to go for the Bucks here, but yeah. not out of the possibility of a bomb to carrier. Yeah, with Vinny Testaverde's bomb arm, he just kind of floats it up there and since you can throw it 120 yards in Tecmo, he's got a shot here. They go to the red gun Z. Testaverde has lots of time. Nobody in his face. Nice pocket there for Vinny. Looking, dancing around his own end zone. Now he's got somebody in his Storing face. Looking deep Cobb. down the field for Cobb. Let's see if Cobb can come up with it. He, he does. <laughs> with Cobb. Reggie I can't believe Cobb. it. I can't believe it. I'm guessing he picked that play so that he wouldn't get not, his play called. Not necessarily the person Fast Ed was he's thinking he'd have the to run. cover on that play. Yeah, exactly. But going here we go now here. towards the shifting one Head setback formation contained. at the bottom. He's going to pick up some yards with Anderson. Has not run it very much with Anderson so far. It's no. been mostly passed from Nostradamus. I think he's hoping that Ed calls a run because he knows he'll get out tapped. But Ed's been calling pass. He's going for the field goal. Probably the smart call. So going but for the field goal here. 12 seconds left. The kick by Christie is up. Yeah, it should be good. Lloyd, and it is good. Lloyd couldn't get through. He got caught there by the center. Usually Lord can get through, there so is a, that's a little surprising. There is a little bit of time here left, so we will have to have a kickoff to Malarkey. And the Steelers will probably look to just take this straight out of bounds here and go to yeah, halftime. Content with a 14-10 lead. Doesn't want to get a fumble there and then Tampa Bay get free points out of it. Absolutely. So welcome to halftime here at the Cleveland Gaming Classic 2023. I'm in the booth here with Tim O'Donnell. This is Ryan McKay, the ultimate weapon. Halftime show underway. Players stretching their legs, getting ready for an exciting second half. Now, this is the semifinal. The winner goes on to play DPS, right? Absolutely, yep. So whoever wins here goes to play DPS, who is undefeated yep. and would have to beat DPS twice. You have to double dip them in the championship. So here we go. The Bucks. that field goal is really big there, Tim, because yep. now the Bucks are only down by back. four with the ball. Yeah, he might have gone for it if he didn't get the ball back to have a guaranteed chance. So you never know how people, people so think. Absolutely. So it's condition check time here. Nostradamus checking out his players, seeing what conditions they're in. Yeah. Yeah. When it's so a live ready game, to go here. you've got to know that you got to know the numbers of each player because the game sometimes tells you they're in bad condition, but you don't know the numbers and you know what that means. And you always and players are allowed to check and switch out once per quarter as yep. part of the rules. Second and six. After that short run, Vinny's going to take it here under. Oh, it's an all out all blitz. Vinny just trying to get it to Carrier. Rod oh, Woodson with the jump. Rod is there all over him. Rod says, Not today. Because Wags the finger. Vinny Testaverde has 56, I believe, PC. I didn't see if he was on good or not, but he knows that Rod cannot jump intercept or jump pick him. Testaverde 
in the shotgun. Going to dump it to Hall. Hall towards the bottom of the screen. Yep. Lots of Steelers there to tackle him inbounds. But Those a first are the plays down, first that, that Nostra hopes for. Is that head calls run, so there's no one to cover. Back to the red gun Z. Testaferdi looking. He's got some options, but he's just going to use his own legs, and he's going to be very close to first down here, and it's going to be just short. Yeah, that's a smart play. Second down, Testa second Verde and one. being one of the faster Every play caller's favorite down, second and one. Second and one. You can do whatever you here want. Here we go. Red Gun Z, Testa Verde dropping back, looking. He's got the first down marker if he wants it, but he's going to throw it Dumps to it Anderson. Anderson's going to pick up yards and get to midfield. A lot first of times down. you see guys just going to continue to scramble because if they throw it, you never know if the guy's even going to catch it. Bucks running a lot of time off the clock here to start the third quarter. Oh, my. Caught from behind there. Steelers with the Vinny. D helping out. The drones. Was dancing around. Hesitated a little bit too long there in the pocket. Now Testa Verde looking, looking. He's going to call his own number again. And he's going to tackle just short of the sticks. Third and third two. two. Going to make him think. If he calls a run and he gets blown up, he'll be fourth down. Run and shoot formation. It's a pitch Going to the aggressive. bottom to Anderson. He's got the help. Oh. oh, and he breaks away. Gary Anderson gives a stiff arm, and now he's in the open field. Gary at the 20, the 15. He got caught. Dropped at the 13-yard line. He got caught there. Yeah, fast dad went aggressive. It actually worked because the guy was in the backfield to help him, but he gets bumped off. Bad luck. So here we go. Testa Verde looking towards the top of the screen. Fast Ed, That's nice defense, defense there, circling again. back, covering the receiver at the bottom. You can hold him to a field goal here. Wanted to go to. It's a run play. It's a test of Verde. Try to contain him. Going towards oh, he bumps the bottom him of off. Gets the help. Oh, and he gets him again oh. in the backfield. Third and eight. That's risky. If he bumps that guy off, he could go rolling himself. But instead, he got the assistance. He got lucky there. So third and eight here. Big down for the Steelers. Oh, it's a pitch up to the top. Rod Woodson gets caught, but he gets away. He gets some help. And then drops him. So fourth and six. six. What's he going to do? So interesting decision here for Nostradamus. 10 to 14, 36 seconds in the third quarter. Does he kick the field goal or does he go for it? Field goal seal leaves him down by one, but lots of time left in the fourth quarter. He knows he'll get one more possession in the fourth quarter. Usually each team gets about a possession per quarter, he's, usually. He's going to roll the dice and he's go for, for it here. Testa Verde looking, oh, looking. One. Big play here. What's he going to do? He's going to run it. Oh, he's going to try to get uh, in, and he's going to be. Oh, he's going to make it to the sticks. Down. Vinny. Wow, that was ballsy. That was ballsy. Reminiscent of the John Way helicopter play. He really two. wanted it. A little bit of a surprise against the Steelers. Do it work? Oh, Justin Verde takes it in again. He shouldn't have dove there. Touchdown. He had the hell. That was surprising. As soon as he saw it was past two, he should have just blitzed him because he had the guys in the back of the end zone to cover both the top and bottom receivers. But How bad does Testa Verde want to win this game, Tim? Not only does he pick up that gritty first down, but then he calls his own number right again yep. after he gets his bell rung and in for the score. Now, if, if Ed would have landed that dive, though, it could have been a fumble. So I understand why he did it, but he didn't need to do it. So it was a little too aggressive, I think. So here we go. 17-14, 4 minutes and 40 seconds left. Malarkey takes it out of his own end zone to the 10, to the 15, and out of bounds at the 16-yard line. good return. At least got almost to the 20. That way you don't have to worry about a, a called play on the – on the goal line there and get a safety. And it's almost game over at that point if he has to kick it again. So condition check time here for the Steelers. Steelers running be, backs are just uh, awful. Fast Ed's last opportunity to check conditions and make any adjustments that he wants. Apologies if anyone has epilepsy that's watching, but this is usually how it goes. Whenever really good players change their their players, they, can, they know exactly the numbers for each of these guys, even the backups, and they know who to put in, who to, who to leave on the bench. So here we go. The Steelers are going to start out in the run and shoot formation. Strom's going to pitch it up towards the top, towards Hodge. Haddix gets caught. Hodge cuts it back towards the bottom of the screen. Hodge is out of bounds. Nice pick. He's getting a lot of down. yards on that. I'm a little surprised that Nostra is trying to engage the blocker instead of just trying to contain. If the Steelers can take a lot of time off again, the clock here an and end in a touchdown, down. that would be ideal for fast Ed. Yep. Hodge is going to pick up a first down. Steelers got one of the better kickers. They can make it from, I think, about 67 yards. We're getting close. So that's the 50-yard line. That's all so he's got to get you to try to get a tie. And that's, Hodge is going to get dropped. That's interesting that he went with uh, Robinson again to try to contain that play. He doesn't have the speed or the interceptions that Haddix has. So I don't know why Ed went with pass four, the Red Guns, he slant, and run two to Hodge. Those formations gives the play away. So it's an easy defense. And he called that run two one time in the game yeah. and hasn't gone back yeah, to it that since. Was, that's surprising. Ed's a smart player. He, he knows that. So basically run two is useless because maybe Nostra, we see it here. Nostradamus knows exactly what what he's doing when he runs that. It's only going to be useful when he needs one yard. That's about as much as he can get. 
So the Steelers and the Bucks taking a little more time here to mull it over on this crucial third down, third and two. Oh, it's a it's a blitz. Oh, and man. he's going to throw for a lift, and it's going he into the stands. He got lucky it threw it out of bounds. He got lucky because that was about to be interception. He had nowhere to go. And that poor hot dog vendor just lost all of his hot dogs. Mm -hmm. Fourth and two. that ball went sailing this right into it. the back of his head. Here we go. Strom dropping back, looking. Looking for options. He's going to throw to Green. It is incomplete. It happened. It took it three chances. Nostradamus every time went for the quarterback. Was a, a, hoping that would happen with the terrible Steelers receptions, the terrible Steelers quarterbacks. But Nostradamus, it failed him both other times. But that time, when he really, really needed it, it came through for him. And now he's got the ball in the fourth quarter. The fast three. coming through with two fourth down touchdowns earlier in yeah, the game. But that time, fourth this down. This time it did not work out. Didn't happen. Being Greg so, Lloyd, he's got a block of chasing him. So Vinny can so get So up by yards. three here now in plus territory. The Bucks are going to try to run this clock down as far as they can. He's going to have to get a turnover here. Steelers need a turnover. Here we go. Test the play. Oh, blitz. Oh, and they're looking. Oh, oh, still incomplete. could have been a pick, though. Steelers defense. They got great secondary. Third oh, of high one. INT guys. At least it was to Carrier, though. That was smart. Bucks taking a long time here to think this over, what they want to do on third and one. Big yep. down for the Bucks. A field goal here still leaves the door cracked for the Steelers. Yep. You don't want to get just a field goal here. Third and one. He's thinking. I like the thinking. That's smart. Run and shoot formation. Test of Verde. Drop the back. Pass. It's a pass play. He's got oh, some he's options. Got plenty he options. could pick it up with his legs. He's it. going to do Easy that. first down. And he's going to get out of bounds. And got out of bounds. That's exactly what you want. Ed going with a run call on there. That's why there was no one helping in coverage. But if it was a run, it would have been a huge help. So back to the Red Gunsy here. It's an all-out blitz. Test of Verde is going to try to get rid of it. Oh, it's uh, blocked. It blocked. Yep. That was Actually, a little risky. I probably wished it wasn't. Yeah, that was a little risky. If it was in bounds, Rod Woodson, Rod God there to get the pick. All right, so back to the run and shoot here with the Bucks. Testa Verde takes it under center, drops back, nice clean pocket, looking, looking, That's good circling, defense. and then he's going to run. Oh, he, he took little. Woodruff there instead of Lloyd or Woodson because he was expecting it to be run three, where he would get the help potentially in the backfield. A little That's dangerous there to run into the team. It was. The Steelers he, he's defense cut too up here into the middle of the field. Of the He's feeling that he needs to stay in bounds to waste time. Woodruff again, expecting run three. Yep, back to the run and shoot. And Testa Verde is going to be short, fourth yep. and one. But there's so a timeout big, called. big down here. Fourth and one. Mr. Adamas yeah, would really like to it. end it here. He's going for it. Let's see. Fast said, trying to keep so hope alive. Going to take Woodson down. Oh, pass. it's an all-out oh. call. He's looking for Cobb. Incomplete. <laughs> big defensive stand Hell by the Steelers. Call. Nice call by Fast Ed. Fast Ed Clutch. playing how he normally plays. Great defense. That's what really keeps him in games. I mean, he doesn't get a lot of long runs with the taps. He gets some good passes whenever he's a little sneaky with it. But usually now, he has to rely on defense. And as Tim mentioned previously, the Steelers kicker, Gary Anderson, has a big leg. So they don't have to go too far yep, just to get, get to about his the range. Yard line. Now, we don't know if he's in good condition or bad condition, but he should be okay at the, by, by the So 50. the Steelers are going to go right to the red gun here. And it's a nice clean pocket for Strom. He's looking, dropping back, and Strom's just going to run and pick up a few yards. Didn't like what he saw. Yeah, if he doesn't have a guy open deep, then Haddock's can stay short, and he's he can't throw it if Haddock stays short. Second and seven, back to the shotgun formation. Strom takes it. Oh, it's an all-out blitz. Looking for Hodge. Timing round. Oh, oh my. no timing. Unbelievable. Right into the teeth of the Tampa defense. Haddock, Robinson, gets away both with there. One there. That, was, that was very lucky. He's got Strom in still, so any threat, any play could be a threat for a bomb touchdown. So that's why he's leaving him in there instead of Brisk. So third and seven here for the Steelers. Oh, it's another, another all-out blitz. Oh, oh, my. He didn't know what to do there. He hesitated. Strom's just going to eat it. Yep. Eugene this Marv. It. This is it. That picked play right there. He didn't know what to do. You can't just throw it up because Hags can just jump pick him. So he's got a guess. And taking the sack might have been the, the best thing he could have done. And the Steelers hoping for the Immaculate Reception Part 2 here. It here. Comes. Down to their last life, Strom in his bomb. own end zone, dancing around as long as he can, to looking Hodge. for Hodge, deep down the field, looking for Merrill Hodge. If he catches no. it there in field goal range, off his fingertips, <laughs> and that's going to oh, do it. That's going to do it. Uh, he could just play. Great game, great semis between Nostradamus left, and Fast Dad. Well played. For those of you that don't play Tecmo very often, uh, you could just you could just kind of waste time, run, pick a run play, run backwards. That's why they're not going to run out the clock here, so that's going to be game. You could just punt it, and it takes a good 20 seconds off the Both clock. Both players so. make the mutual decision They make here the mutual decision to say, yep, game. that's game over. So The odds of the uh, 
It's kind of like a, a punt kneel. and a run back. Are yeah, very the slim. punt and techno is kind of like the kneel down play. You can just kind of waste time. Right. It was a great game, though. It was a great game. So thank you all for tuning in. We will be back with the actual finals here, which will feature Nostradamus versus DPS uh, momentarily. But we're going to take a quick break here, and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Thanks for listening on the 216 Sports Network. Yeah. Welcome back to 2023 Cleveland Gaming Classic here at the IX Center. We are pleased to broadcast the gold bracket final game here. Dan Slattery, DPS, on the left-hand side is going to be the Steelers. Nostradamus on the right, the Redskins. Dan has to lose twice yep. in order for Nostradamus to take the crown here. So the first game is Pittsburgh at Washington. DPS controlling Pittsburgh. Nostradamus controlling Washington. Uh, DPS won the toss. Anderson's going to be kicking it deep. Yeah, if Dan wins, if DPS wins the Steelers, then they are the champions. He does not have to beat Nostradamus twice. He gets player one, which is very useful in Tech Mobile, just how the RNG works, the randomness and the numbers and interceptions, etc. Yep, Ryan McKay, the ultimate weapon here on the play-by-play. Tim O'Donnell, disciple on the color commentary. Thanks for being here again, Tim. Absolutely, I love it. We are in the Red Gun Z to start here with Rippin dropping back. And Rippin looks like he's going to get dropped for a loss in that first play by Rod. Rod Woodson with the great defense. He's got 63 INT. So against these quarterbacks, uh, I do believe that he can JJ or jump intercept both so go, quarterbacks. Going to that shifting formation there at that bottom run. You too, Ed. Take it easy. Nice man. run by Fast Ed today, taking off. Yeah, Fast Ed getting, I believe, what, fourth place? Uh, it'll be third. Or third place, third. yeah. Biner here on a run towards the bottom of the screen. Woodson actually gets tossed there, but it's fourth and five. Fourth and five. Early punt for Nostradamus. For the punt. Nostradamus has taps on everyone, which means that he can slide his hand across the controller, which is legal, and he can out tap or throw off anyone or tackle anyone. So uh, that plays good burn hit with a nice deep punt there, but a nice run back by nice Bell. Return. Yeah, I'm surprised DPS does take a lot of chances with the punt returns, but he does great with it. He Looking gets for that yards. good field position to start here for the Steelers, yeah. who have a tough time getting it. Worley towards the bottom of the screen with blocking in front. Makes a man miss. Very surprised Worley that no tosses the defender. For the Worley at the 40, the 45, the 50. Tim Worley. That was nice a surprise. I don't run. know why Nostradamus felt the need to dive there. Maybe he's not feeling confident in his tapping today. Here we go, Strom. It's an all-out blitz looking for her lips, but it's going to go into the stands. And Nostradamus with the Redskins has Daryl Green and Martin Mayhew, who are his strong points on defense, both the corners. And once again, we, we do want to thank the 216 Sports Gaming Network for broadcasting this game here in Tecmo Cleveland. Yeah, usually Cleveland doesn't get a broadcast out, so this will be nice for everyone to see these games, these great players going at it. So here we go. The Steelers come in the T formation here. Strom, he's going to hand it off up the gut to Worley. Worley's going to bounce it up towards the top of the screen, circling around. Great run. Very impressive. Fourth and two in plus territory. DPS, a little antsy there, not really wanting to settle for three. Nostra Thomas was a little risky there going for the bump, but it almost paid off for him. But he, no, This DPS is for all away. the marbles. Fourth and two. Here we go. Two Strong. wide open guys. He must have called and, Oh, he could have maybe pass. picked it up with his own feet, but now he's got Green. Oh, and Green lips. with a diving catch. Another oh, sorry, lips down. over Daryl Green. My, yep. Excuse me. Louis, Louis lifts, lifts over Daryl Green into the end zone. Now, if you watch the last stream, that From is Rick another. Strong. What a play. Another no seen a lot of fourth down touchdowns. That's right, because it's, it's Notre Dame is playing very aggressive on D, making the Steelers throw the ball on fourth down, which is very, very risky, but. With the Steelers' pass game, you know, it, it works out, as we saw at the end of the last game, and it helped him win the game. Throwing over Daryl Green, very dangerous yes, there, too. But now, Daryl Green out. actually only has 44 INT, so he cannot jump pick uh, Strom or Brister, but Mayhew can on both of them, I believe. At the least, he was hoping there for a knockdown, but yep. Green was too far out of position. Yeah, he was. Uh, he, he blitzed up, and so he just threw it over his head, and it was almost an overthrow, which would have been a huge play for the Redskins, for Nostradamus here. So here we go to the shifting run towards the bottom. Rippin's going to hand it off to Biner, and he's cutting it back towards the middle of the screen. And Biner, he's taking it off on a nice run here to the 40, the 45, the 50. And if run. you saw on the stream there that little blip, 
there was not an earthquake here in Cleveland. <laughs> that was just a little snafu there by 216 Sports Network. We I believe had someone a... dropped their cell phone on the wire. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. We're all okay here, folks. So here we go. Ripping in the run and shoot. Going to pitch it up top towards Biner. Biner cuts it back towards the middle. DPS is doing something very different than what Nostradamus was doing last game, using the top uh, defensive back there, Rod Woodson. Whenever Nostradamus calls run one to goes towards him, DPS is going around the blocker to contain. He does so it again There we go. Here, he does it again. For the dive, right on cue there by Tim. There it is again. And the blocker did not help out. DPS really good at, on that specific play with the dive. He's got the timing down real nice. And unlike the real NFL, the defender does not need to reestablish himself in bounds before making That's a tackle. Right. That's right. Just run out of bounds. <laughs> this is one of the great things about tackles. Run into Super the Bowl. crowds, around the cheerleaders. <laughs> So, that so was here a good we run by uh, Nosha there on run three. He had only one blocker. So first and ten, Rippin with the shifting one setback formation. Rippin's gonna hand it off to Biner. Biner dances around in the hole right up the middle. You got the help. Up the middle like a batter block. arm gives a stiff arm, and Biner's gonna go in for the score. Great run. Nostradamus with the equalizer. Ernest Biner. <laughs> that was a great run by Nostradamus. He had the extra help with the blocking, and that paid off big time. So DPS, we're all knotted up at seven. DPS played pretty aggressive there, wanted to get the stop before the first down, but it, it ended up hurting him. Nostradamus knowing he has to win this game and the next game to be crowned the gold bracket champion. Kicks deep to Bell. Bell takes it out of his own end zone. He's at the five, the 10. Dancing around goes backwards, nice, back to the nice eight. Nice coverage, keeping the Steelers. That's a big part of their, their team uh, game plan is to get the kick returns deep because they have a fast uh, right tackle. If you don't know about that in Tecmo, the right tackle speed determines your kick return speed. And the Steelers have one of the better right tackles, so they get really good kick returns, but not a very good one there, which is surprising because Dan TPS is very good at that, as he is at everything else. So here we go. Strom in the red gun. He's got a blitzer, oh, and he gets oh, caught from Charles behind. Charles man. man broke through the line, put some pressure on DPS, which is why having a great kick return there is so important because he doesn't have to stay out of the end zone to avoid a potential sack that could change the whole game around with a safety. Great start for the Steelers, or Redskins defense here. Steelers backed up into their Worley taking the pitch out of his own end zone. Does have a blocker. Yeah, good contain. And he's getting third and this eight. Nostradamus playing it safe there, knowing he's not going to get very far with a, a slow running back, just containing it, not going for the, the crucial dive. So the Steelers go to the run and shoot here. It's a run. He's got run blocking in front. He's going to play a little more aggressive this time. Oh, he, he had a cavalcade. Right. A cavalcade of blocking. <laughs> Worley slow, but he's going to get to the 30. Yeah, he played it very different that time. It almost worked out for him. He almost got in behind the blocking. So here we go. Strom dropping back, toward, going towards the top of the screen. Moving backwards now, He's looking for Lips. Up. Deep down the field, looking for Louis Lips. Oh, oh that my, and the double pick. coverage, dangerous surprising. throw. That was surprising. He knew that uh, Mayhew in, I believe it was green he was usering. I, I believe Mayhew stayed up, so that's why he went for the bomb. I could be wrong on that, but that's why I'm guessing he did it. But he took that chance. Yeah, instead of going for the scramble, forcing green to charge him, and then maybe getting a couple yards. You know, taking that interception, Rick, is pretty, uh, pretty risky on that play. So third and 14, back to the Red Gun Z shotgun play here. Redskins trying to figure out who they want. They're going to go with Mann. Strom dropping back. Mann trying to circle short here, daring Strom bomb. to throw deep. Strom deep. avoids one defender, avoids a second defender, now looking deep down the field for Green. Mm, oh, it's picked is. off! That's the interception. Steelers, quarterbacks. Oh, oh and he the ball! Oh, and Steelers all over Who's going to pick it up? Oh, oh the, the Redskins, Redskins get it back. It. Alvin Walton. Well, wasted about 30 seconds in Tecmo. The time ticks real fast, kind of more like Mario, if you're familiar with oh, it. Oh, my. That was uh, pretty nuts. If the Steelers would have picked that up, it would have been uh, a <laughs> pretty, pretty lucky play for a, Dan. For a strange twist of fate. So, again, it was a long pass. Intercepted, fumbled, recovered by the Redskins. The Redskins possessed it twice there. So here we go. Rippin's got it. Oh, it's an all-out blitz to start this drive. Looking for Sanders at the bottom, and it's tipped away. Second and 10. 22 seconds left in the half. 7-7. Seven, seven. Rippin drops back in the run and shoot. He's got a nice pocket. He's looking for the bomb here. Who's he going to throw it to? He's looking for Sanders. Sanders. Sanders at the bottom of the screen. Steelers He's deep enough. Him. Can he pull it down? Hey! Oh, he gets it! Hey! Nostradamus! Wow, timed it With perfectly. a halftime bomb to Ricky Sanders! 
If he did not time that perfectly, it would not have worked. There was three Steelers right there. He got tackled immediately when he hit the ground. That was impressive. Well, that's Tecmo, though, bombing up 80 yards with one second left. Well, Ricky Sanders had the speed to get away from the bottom defender yes, there. He did. And he had the hops. Yeah, that's why he angled it, threw it from the, the middle of the field there instead of directly down. Uh, it decreases the, the accuracy a little bit, but he made it to where the angle uh, would be above the lower defensive back. And so if it's a jump play or dive, which it was, it gives him any advantage to actually catch it, even though there's defenders all over the place. So welcome back here to the third quarter to kick off from the Redskins, which made that play even bigger because yes, the Steelers get the ball first here to start the second half. And this is a return you want to see with the Steelers. He cuts up because he's got the double blocking there. He's in a little trouble now, but he cuts yeah, back. Look at Bell go. A nice starting field position here for the Steelers. Much better than their last starting yeah, drive. Looks like he's putting Brister back in to get the fast arm speed now so that he can zing it all over the place. But still, Mayhew can jump pick. Jump and intercept him every time he's in the, the As the Tim flight mentioned, path. Brister can zing it all over the place, but will it be accurate? Yeah, that's the other thing is his uh, <laughs> accuracy is, what is it, a 25, I believe? That is pretty bad. So even if there's a wide open guy, it might not be a catch. We'll see what happens. So here we go. Brister comes out in the run and shoot. He drops back. He's got one defender in his face. Gets a, oh, no, he can't get away. Tracy, Tracy Rocker. Rocker. Pushes through. Rocked by Rocker. Yeah, looks like DPS is going to go for the scramble there, try to maybe suck in Nostradamus, but he gets sacked instead. So Steelers starting here, second and 13. Brister looking, going to throw cross field to Lips. Lips has a first down and more. Yeah, Lips out of bounds at around the 43-yard line. Pretty good. He had, a, he had a linebacker in the line of, of path there, so that could have been a jumped-up tip. I think it was Mineski that was in the way, so I'm a little surprised he didn't jump for it. Steelers back to the Red Gun Z here. Redskins trying to decide who they want. Last time they went with man, they go with man again, and it is an all-out blitz. Tracy Rocker drops him again for the second time on this drive. Surprised second and 19. played it that way. Usually when that play gets called, they scramble upwards. So Worley goes up the middle, bounces back, and then back up the middle, but third and 17 here for the Steelers. Put Rick Strom in because now there's a threat for a long pass instead of a quick zing, which he might need. So here we go, Strom like this is gonna be dropping it, back. Well, he He's got a couple shirt. defenders in his face. Gets it away short. just in time to Worley. Oh, Charles dangerous Mann throw. on the coverage. Getting a, using a defensive lineman to have extra coverage helped out there because the quarterbacks are not very good. Not something Steelers. we see too often here in the technical community, DPS punting. Yeah. So what was that, fourth and third? There is actual live footage. Yes, he has punted, <laughs> yes, folks. It's happening while losing, too. So here we go. Nostradamus Steelers playing a really it. good game here. Back against the wall. Has to win two. He's looking pretty Condition good. Condition check one. time for the Redskins. The Redskins with their, I believe it was called, was it the Posse is what they called their uh, wide receiver core back in the day? Is that what that was called? I know the they called themselves the Hogs. I don't know about the Posse. Yeah, um, I think their receiver, he was, he was either the Broncos or it was um, or it was them. So here we go. Rippon's going to throw cross field to Sanders. Oh, a, a diving Woodson. And Sanders is going to gash him again. Yeah, DPS. Sanders takes it into plus Steelers, territory. DPS there was in a tough spot. Had everyone open. He called a run play, which is why everyone was open. And he had to make a Ricky, choice. Ricky Sanders, have yourself a day, sir. <laughs> here we go. Rippon drops back in the shotgun. Looking. DPS, uh, well, he's going to blitz. Oh, looking no. for Gary Clark. Oh, no. oh, he's got Clark. He's got him. Touchdown, Redskins. And Nostradamus has his uh, his kiddo here in in the audience watching his game. He got some excitement out of him in that time because that was a huge play. Looks like he's going to win this game, but we still got five minutes, 20 seconds to play. So let's see what happens. So Nostradamus up 21-7 here. DPS back against the wall. We saw this in the silver bracket. Yep. Brian Adams up two games, lost the first game, rebounded to win the second one. Yep. We'll see if Dan can uh, rebound here in his first game and get back in it. Now, this is an interesting matchup because the Redskins are supposedly much better than the Steelers, but DPS loves using those Steelers, so he'll call Steelers versus a better team just so that he can So here we get go. To He's going to start Steelers. with a this run. A oh, and play. it's all. Nostradamus having none of that. We've got a lot of background music. We're at the Cleveland Classic where there is a lot of fun entertainment. This is an annual event if you want to come check it out one time. Yeah, we are at the after party actually right now. Ran a little overtime. Thanks to Tom Jenkins for letting us hang out here and finish the tournament. We've got a light show going on back there. I'm not sure what event it is, but there are lots of tournaments at this event. I think there's a Smash Brothers tournament as well as the Tecmo tournament. So Strom dropping back. He's looking. 
Got a guy up He's going to throw Andy. it to Lips. Lips is going to get the first down and Whoa, more. Whoa, he got the taps on Notre Dame. I think Notre Dame was expecting his defense to help him out there. Yeah. Got, got a little uh, lazy on the tap. Lips threw a stiff arm there at Daryl Green and yep. told him to take a seat. Here we go, Strom right, dropping back, goes. looking deep down no the field. No time on the clock. He's going to go for the Strom bomb. So he bombs He's looking up Eric for Green. For Green. Can he connect deep down the field? He's looking the for Green. Oh, just a second. Incomplete. Too late. The diver went into the back of the end zone. I think if he would have thrown just a split second earlier, he might have got the receiver to slide just a little bit. But the end zone stops the receiver from continuing his slide. So that's a smart play where the clock is running out because you're not burning any clock while the ball's in the air. So, so welcome to time. the fourth quarter here at the Cleveland Gaming Classic 2023 brought to you by 216 Sports Network here on the broadcast. Strom, oh, and he's going to get tackled. Signature move there on Red Gunsy Slant. It's past four there for DPS to kind of go up with that angle to try to force the guy to make a decision to come up and get the quarterback or stay Only stay two back. yards there, but Steelers in four down territory. So yes, two absolutely. chances here to get eight yards. Might see another Third and eight. Here. Oh, here come the Redskins. And Strom's face looking deep down the field for Lips. Lips. Oh, and Charles it's Mann swatted away. With the great defense. Now, I think he bombed it up there because Mayhew again stayed up with the tight end. But it's fourth and eight now. He has to go for it. He's already picked his play. He knows what he wants to do. And Nostradamus likes to think about it. So we go to the shotgun. Is it a call play? It is not. Strom has some time. Nice clean pocket. He's got some options. Guy. And he's now the deep oh, out of bounds. And that's what the go Steelers. For ellipse. That's what the Steelers do, man. They really just blow the pass play. And that's why. And there's a souvenir for the uh, fan in the stands. <laughs> yeah. yeah. DPS is so good with the Steelers. That's why it's so shocking that he he's he just keeps winning with them because they just suck on offense, but he can score with them. So we start the Redskins opening drive here with an all-out bullet, second and 17. Redskins just trying to run the clock out here and get to game two. Yeah. Biner pitched to the top. Biner cuts back towards the middle. Oh, we might get lucky he, oh, here. He got oh, lucky. he breaks Busts away. Out. Two stiff arms. Biner up the middle. DPS. There he goes. He's zigging and zagging. DPS He's going to score. Happy. Ernest Biner. DPS not happy with that play there. And if the nail wasn't in the coffin before, Tim, that's gonna it is do now. It. Yeah, that's going to do it. It's, uh, what, three minutes left. The kickoff's going to take about 30, 45 seconds, and there's going to be another championship game to be played. A game seven, if you will, winner take all. We're going to see who wins the coin toss on that one. Let's see uh, Let's see the end of this one. I mean, the Steelers is not a team you want to be down with and try to bomb it up. So Tim Worley takes it out. Good return about there. About the 24-yard line, first and 10. Two minutes and 34 seconds left. No chance in Tecmo to get three touchdowns here, but DPS just playing for pride, trying to uh, score here again before yep. the game's up. Get a little practice in. Learning opponent's tendencies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Always something valuable to be learned, even when you're losing in Tecmo. All-out blitz here. Strom going to eat it over Marshall. That's some loud music back there we got going on there. Got a party going on. And during these last two minutes here, I'm going to hand the headset over to Ramel just to give a little plug here for the 216 Sports Network since we've got a blowout on our hands here, folks. This has been a great game. DPS, Notre Dame is two of the top players in online play. I really do like seeing them go at it. What is up, everybody? This is Mel from the 216 Sports Network. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching as we have a deep pass to Lips, and Lips is incomplete. Yeah, we're going to see another Strom bomb here. Uh, for those that don't know about us, 216 Sports Network specializes in covering all sports, including esports, which is why we are here at the Cleveland Classic Gaming Convention. And it's intercepted yep. by Mayhew. Not a surprise. Mayhew has 69 INT. That's a likely scenario when the Steelers are punting, but it really did not matter all that much because the game, the game's over. I mean, this right here is what we and call those you guys, the meal play. And for those of you guys that are looking for esports events that cover we are available. You can find us on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook at the 216 Sports Network as Worley was trying to return that. And that will do it for the first game. And now it is a do or die situation as DPS now has to win this last game in order to win the championship. Nostra Dramas with a very good strategy. Yeah. Yeah, he took the better team there. He knew that uh, as player two in Tecmo, you get a lot of more overthrows. You 
Some people even say you're more likely to fumble it. You're certainly more likely to intercept it. If you have ever heard of BrewDog, he does a reverse engineered Tecmo, essentially, where he understands all the numbers and how, how they work and how the interceptions are, how they work against the receptions and the quarterback's pass control. Uh, pass accuracy is actually a statistic in Tecmo that doesn't matter, according to BrewDog. <laughs> you would think that would be a big thing that matters, but it, it doesn't at all. It's not part of the programming, and so he has figured that out, and it's made a lot of people a lot better now that they know that. So if you're new to Tecmo or you used to play, there's a lot of online leagues. You can check out Discord, try to find a Tecmo leagues. There's beginner leagues. There's uh, veteran leagues. There's high speed leagues. All there's there's a uh, legendary leagues where you play with all the teams from the past. So thank you guys for listening. We'll get you into the championship game here in a minute. And as the disciple has elegantly put it, we will be back with the true championship game. Now it's do or die here at the Cleveland Class and Gaming Convention, the Tecmo Bowl, Tecmo Super Bowl tournament. So we will be right back after we change the scoreboards with the championship game. Trail there. Tell me. Welcome back to the Cleveland Gaming Classic 2023. This is the Gold Bracket Finals. We have DPS on the right hand side. He's the Giants. We have Nostradamus on the left as the Bills. So here's the kickoff. Nostradamus is the one that called the matchup. He won the coin toss. So he calls Bills Giants, which I was not anticipating that. Usually these top players uh, don't go with these great teams but so you know you never know what the mentality is why he picked it we could be in for an exciting shootout folks here we go thurman thomas to the bottom blocking in front thurman finds a block nice dive and then a nice very nice dive DPS by dps there on defense using gary reasons he has the highest interceptions of any linebacker in tecmo but he's a so little slow this this one is for all the marbles thurman to the bottom cuts it back towards the bottom oh and there goes thurman thomas down the sideline big run thurman thomas he's gonna go to the 15 to 40 45, 30, 35. Oh, zigging and zagging past the drones. Thurman's going to take it all the way into the end zone. Touchdown, Thurman Buffalo. With that 63 max speed gets all the way down the field. That's a huge score against the Giants defense who you would expect to get maybe a stop or two, but the Bills offense is just. And Thurman's so fired up after that run and spikes it in the end zone. LT Great there. start for the Bills. Can't get 7 on nothing the, On the screen there to maybe get a, a blocked extra point, but uh, 7 to nothing. You know, you want to see you want to see a good game, a good shootout between these two teams, a little action going on, but these guys so, are so great on defense. Just, that just, So Scott Norwood kicks it deep. Giants are going to start deep in their own territory at their 10-yard line. And Nostradamus has been really good on the kickoffs, pinning DPS deep in his territory. The Giants are going to start in the run and shoot here. It's a pitch up top to Meggett. Meggett. The man uh, defender gets caught there in a wash. Meggett's up the top. Now Meggett breaks a long run of his own near midfield. First down. Bills have a lot of great guys on defense, but their secondary is trash when you're going up against a good passing team like the Giants. Oh, and here's an all-out blitz. Phil Sims gets away from it somehow and picks up six yards. Yeah, there's a call play. He got away from it because Nostradamus is using Tally as a linebacker one, so DPS knew that he could kind of scramble that direction. He does it again. And here's another all-out call. He stays inbounds, trying to gain some yards. They're very risky on that called play. If the so uh, once again, this game is for all the marbles. We're at the 2023 Cleveland Gaming Classic here at the IX Center. Thanks to Tom Jenkins for putting on such an amazing event, and another thanks to the 216 play. Sports Network for allowing us to broadcast. There will be a link in the videos here for anybody that enjoys this broadcast and wants to send a donation to the 216 Sports Network. Ramel talked a little bit about what 216 Sports Network does in the previous broadcast, and we appreciate his partnership here at Tecmo Cleveland. Fourth and six going for DPS. He gets the blocker. Nostradamus playing great defense, using Tally to get the extra help in coverage because Tally has 44 INT, which is one of the better INT linebackers in the game. So Dave Meggett, this pitch to the top again. He keeps calling that play because... He broke the long run. He's trying to get that one-on-one -on -one isolation, and there goes Meggett. Tackle. It's tossing defenders like a rag doll. And Dave Meggett's going to take it all the way in for the score. Another long run. DPS wisely relying on run one there, the pitch at the top, because two people go block Daryl Talley, who Nostradamus continues to use on defense. If you like running backs... This is your game. David Meggett, Thurman Thomas, 
so far putting on a show here in the finals. Yeah, he might even be an Otis Anderson appearance in there. He's pretty quick as well. Maybe even Mueller. <laughs> yeah, he might bust out of two, two or three uh, broken tackles there on a kick return, but only getting to the seven-yard line is going to be tough against the Giants' defense. So all knotted up here at seven in the finals. First down and ten. Bills drop back, run and shoot. Oh, he's got a defender. Oh, narrowly avoids the safety there. That's LT coming at him. Throws it to Thomas. Thomas trying to get away. Thurman has pretty good receptions, and Jim Kelly throwing it has 81 pass control, so it's pretty much going to be caught every time. Second and three Bills dropping back, run and shoot. QB Bills dropping back, looking deep for Andre Reed. Oh, it's the swatted away there. So if you haven't seen that before, that's called the arrow trick. If you hit BA really quick, it throws it to the guy that the cursor's on, but the uh, the cursor switches to the next receiver in the cycle. But if you do it just fast enough, you can kind of trick your defense, but the DPS was ready for it, and he stayed back to deflect it. A yeah, good discipline there. Everson Walls with the SWAT. Yep. Everson Thurman Walls. Thomas at the bottom got a little bit of blocking in front. Everson Walls is the best DB as far as uh, INT. I believe on the Giants uh, secondary, it's fourth and one here. So here we go, fourth and one. His own, what, 17-yard line? Mo he's on his own 17. DPS. But most Tecmo players feel if it's fourth and four or less, run they can pick it up. A lot of Especially options. for elite players. Here we go. It's run three to the bottom. Thurman's going to get it and more. Thurman, Cavalcade of blocking in front. But then he gets dropped by the safety. DPS. There was a lot of green there in front. If that safety wouldn't have made the tackle. DPS going for this, the strong, uh, aggressive play there. But it, uh, it kind of cost him, almost cost him a big run. See, here we Oh, now it's all an all play. out blitz, and Thurman's going to get dropped. Second and 12. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see more runs here from Nostradamus. He usually can out tap DPS. Bills throwing it up top to Thomas, cutting it back towards the bottom. Thomas finds a hole in the line. Thomas. Cut it back up. Probably Six yard out game. Of bounds there. He wasn't going to get many yards, but he was maybe hoping for a little luck with the drone trailing DPS. Third and four. Once again, it's ultimate weapon, Ryan McKay on the mic. Accompanied by Tim O'Donnell, Disciple, with the color commentary. Hey -o. Thanks again for being here, Tim. I love being here, man. This is a great event, Cleveland Classic. It's a party, three days long. This tournament's only on Saturday, of course, but there's a lot of other things going on here. It's an annual event. You should always come check it out if you can. Tim and I are thankful the music's a little more mellow right now. It's pretty loud during the last game, but we are in the after party. Yep. It's just their world. We're living in it here in Tecmo, Cleveland. We... Went a little bit over our allotted time. Thanks to Tom Jenkins for letting us stay here and finish the tournament. Absolutely. So here's QB Bills running to the bottom. Run three, and it's a tap off, but it's still a first down for the Bills. Continue to matriculate the ball down the yeah, field nicely here on this drive. A lot of times in bounds here. I wouldn't be surprised to see another all-out blitz. Oh, and it's incomplete. And yeah, he, he intentionally threw it away there. He saw that his running back was thrown down. He's Nostradamus wisely checked it down, threw it away, so there would no be, be no interception there. And correct me if I'm wrong, Tim, I believe when the running back falls down like that and they throw it, there's no way it can be intercepted. That is so. absolutely correct, yes. So here we go. McKellar to the bottom of the wow, screen. Another DPS first down. Wow, with the tap off. Don't usually see that, but when Nostradamus doesn't win a tap off, a lot of times it is DPS. So that was uh, surprising. That could have been a big play. All right, here we go to the bottom of the screen, third and 12. It's a called play there. He's wasting a little time here. He's kind of in a no man's land of should I push it? Is How long is this drive going to take? But with the Bills' great offense, he's, he wants to waste some time. So the Bills, one minute and 13, Everyone covered. 12. Oh, oh my. He's going to toss the defender. And he's just going to try to run with his legs, third and he's six. Trying to waste as much time as he can. Surprising that... He didn't uh, waste more time there, but never he's feeling like he needs to push it now. He is okay, pushing looking it. for Andre Reed. Walls oh, was boy. ready for it. And sorry there, I thought it was third down before, but Nostradamus' hat got in the way there <laughs> of the camera. We couldn't see what down and distance it was. Yeah, now fourth it's fourth and now. six. Now, since the players can hear me, I'm not going to maybe say what I think they should do here. Well, we'll let him just say what he wanted yeah, to say after this play. Decide. And maybe I'll, I'll give a reason why they did what they did here because it looks like DPS calling his play on defense almost daring Nostradamus to go for it. Yep. He's so 38, 38 seconds left here in the first half. This is for all the marbles. Nostradamus won game one. Yes, he did. DPS hadn't lost in the gold bracket all day. Yep. DPS had his first loss handed to him by Nostradamus. The winner takes all here. 
He goal is going champion. for it. I would have kicked the field goal. There's only 30 seconds left, so even if you get it, the odds that you're still going to get a touchdown on the next couple of plays is very low. But so he is going for the aggressive he's play. Going. Goes Thurman the Thomas run, run to the bottom. Can he make it to the sticks? Oh, he's, he's just stopped. short. Left three points on the board, I feel like. But I think he was considering the fact that LT is on the, the kick team there, and so he's going to block the kick even if he goes for it. Uh, they got a decent you know, kicker, but it doesn't matter because LT is so fast, he's going to get in the face. So I think he was just assuming it would be blocked and decided to go for the what I think is a very risky play considering there's only 38 seconds. And even if he would have got the first, there's only 20 seconds left. So that's, what, one or two shots at the end zone. Hopefully you make it, but you might end up having to kick the field goal anyway. That's why I would have kicked it. So the Giants are ready. The Bills are ready. Here we go to the shotgun formation. Phil Sims dropping back. Oh, he has a free rusher in his face. Gets away from him. Sims back into his own end zone. And now he's looking for Baker. Stephen Baker, the touchdown the maker. Touchdown Deep maker. down the field, Stephen we Baker. Got timing. Oh, oh my. Get the jump. That was perfectly timed. That should have been a Heartbeat touchdown. Heartbeat still. Almost a huge play there at the end of the half. The and a round of applause of here. Tecmo on the halftime show. Yeah, a round of applause and <laughs> some cheering going on here cheer. in the background. I believe for these two they, great competitors. I believe they have called uh, that one Lacey. I think they've named the cheerleaders. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. But uh, if you ever listen to a Tim Poppy stream, uh, it's very entertaining. I, I think he's given those ladies a name or two. <laughs> Shout out to Tim Poppy. So here we go. He's Giants good. condition check time, third quarter. We got Megan Anderson in there. I mean, there's not many guys on the Giants bench that you would want to put in unless they're totally all the way up to excellent and your guys on bad because the Giants offense is just so great. So not surprised that we're seeing the starters stay here. Got a so run here we play. go. DPS starting off with the called run, the shifting run towards the bottom. Nostra Dom is trying to figure out who he wants to use to defend it. Bennett is probably the best choice. Tries to pop the lineman, gets in there. Oh, and he drops him. Had help, too. It was surprising. They came. He didn't even get past the line of scrimmage. A lot of times when you think you're going to win the tap off, you'll stay behind the line of scrimmage so that the defense does not come help. But they came anyway. And that is one advantage of having a good linebacker four against that play if you have the taps. Here we go. Sims dropping back. Oh, now he's going to look to meg it. Check, check it down, down. and Got get a first, first down. It's a good play. Not too risky. Didn't want to throw it deep, even though the uh, Bills secondary is not the best, but they could still knock it down. So why not get an easy first down? The gold championship hanging in the balance. Pitch to Maggot up top. Maggot tries to get away. Gets six shards. Yeah, got tackled in bounds. Second and four. Tally there with, with getting some help from, I think, Kelso. Maybe one of the linebackers. I didn't really see who it was. Sims back to the run. Shoot another pitch up top to Maggot. Maggot's got some blocking. So that time, Nostradamus used Bruce Smith because he's not double teamed like Daryl Talley, linebacker one, is because he was thinking it was going to be pass one again. Here we go. Now one. it's run three to the bottom, and Megan's just going to run out of, out of bounds. Second First and 12. Down. They got Red Guns East Red Gun. Everyone's open. So Sims got a lot of choices here. He's going to throw it to Baker. Yeah. Baker makes a nice cut up the field. And out of bounds at about the 39-yard line. is not the fastest guy. Actually, uh, Cornelius Bennett is faster than he is, but he, Bennett has no interceptions, so that's why he's using Tally. Here's Bennett on this one, though, probably because he was feeling a little slow on the last one, so he wants the speed. Oh, oh he gets the my! Diver to Mark Ingram Sr. Diving catch down to the one. Down to the one, and now he's got any almost any play he can call here. For those of you not as familiar with these teams, the Bills have the slightly worse defense the wow. and the better offense. Yep. And it's the inverse for the Giants. Although the Giants have a very good offense as well. Not the worst thing to, to get sacked back to the seven. That opens up the passing plays a little bit. But, you know, going from the one to the seven, obviously, in football is not ideal. So here we go. Pitch to the bottom. Cavalcade blocking in front for Megan. He cuts back. Oh, he dropped it the one. one again. No. Oh. I, think, I thought uh, he had it. I think he called defense, called a pass play on that one, Nostradamus, assuming that you know they're, he's going to take advantage of the space, maybe get a pass in, but he, that's why probably why DPS called run. Here's another run. He's going to go for the bump. He gets it. Got the help to follow, though, but the blocking was still there. He grabbed Nostradamus. David Meggett gets the touchdown anyway. Touchdown, DPS and the Giants. That's a tough play to stop. Yeah, even, it really is. 
especially on the goal line. Yeah, even if you got taps there, uh, if you engage with Bennett, linebacker four there, throw the guy off, you know, DPS probably going to get at least a yard, and that's all he needs. So that's why he went for the bump on defense to get the help in the backfield, but it didn't pay off for him. So here we go, third quarter, one minute and 26 seconds left. Mueller taking it out of the own, his own end zone, only, only makes it back the to the five. five. Yeah, the Bills have a pretty terrible right tackle. We mentioned in the last stream that if you didn't know that, that's – what determines the speed of the kick returner in Tecmo Super Bowl? The right tackle. Uh, so the Bills... and after after that long run in the first quarter, Tim, I think Thurman pulled his hamstring a little bit. He's in bad, <laughs> yeah, he's which not may not bode well for the Bills. He's still one of the fastest running backs in Tecmo with that 56 speed. Is still a huge threat. Has still good uh, receptions for a running back. And with Jim Kelly, who is called QB Bills in this game because they didn't pay him enough money. Uh, with his 81 pass control. Three quarterbacks in the game, QB Bills, QB Eagles, wow. and QB Picked Browns. play on the goal line. That's why kick returns are so crucial in Tecmo. There's only so much you can do when you're on the five. So this is huge for DPS. So those three quarterbacks were the only three players who did not join the Players Association yeah. for this game, and I'm sure live to regret it, although they have been immortalized in their own way. Everson Walls dropping back, looking. Bills throwing deep for Andre Reed. Can Walls swat it away Walls again? Looking Reed. deep for Reed. Oh, he oh, gets to be burned to him. Andre Reed. Wow, didn't get the jump. That was that was what I would say very lucky for Notre Dame. Walls was in position. DPS put his guy right where he needed to be. He had options on offense to throw it. And now DPS gets the bump that Notre Dame uh, got earlier, but didn't get the extra help with the blocking coming behind him. But LT getting in a little bit faster. Andre returned on the afterburners on that catch there to blow past walls. Yep. Here we go. Bills dropping back. He's got some options. He's going to throw it short to Thomas. Thomas is going to get dropped a yard short of the sticks. DPS Third and using one. Gary Reasons there with his 63 INT. You just have getting a little bit like a nickel linebacker there, so to speak, for Tecmo to or an extra try to safety. stop that yep. pass. So here we go. Third and one going to shotgun. QB Bills, lots of choices. He's going to call his own number with his legs and get out of bounds. First down. Yeah, he didn't want to take the shot down field again. Sticks. He knew he got lucky the first time, so he decided to just get the easy first down. So now the Bills going with the motion run, shifting to the bottom. Handing it off to Thomas. Thomas cuts it back towards the top of the screen. Thomas is going to pick up five yards. Second and five. DPS with the bump there, going aggressive. Kind of backfired on him. Bills, oh, it's an all-out play. He's looking for Reed. Oh, and this time it's swat away. Walls wags his finger. No, no, no. Not again. Got his play picked. The only thing you can do is, is throw it up to that top receiver. You can maybe try to scramble around and check it down to the tight end, but uh, DPS was ready for the throw. So now it's a run to the bottom. He does have blocking in front, but Thomas DPS cannot get away. DPS again gets the, the tap off. I can't, I can't believe that Nostradamus, who usually is a 20-plus taps, if you're unfamiliar with how we know how fast these guys tap online, there's a lot of leagues we play with, with ROMs that, show you how fast someone can tap the button and it's not necessarily actually a tap we call it the slide because they're not pushing the button they're sliding their fingers across it and that's how these guys these top players can tap so fast so the bills to the run and shoot thurman thomas pitch to the top trying to get the blocking in front he gets oh, it he thurman thomas block. dancing around thurman picks thomas up a first down is still Buffalo. a very good running back move the sticks again for the bills now we're into the fourth quarter three minutes and 40 seconds left they go to the red gun z QB Bills waiting. He takes the snap. He's Everyone's looking. Open. He's got options. He's going to dump it to Thomas. Oh, and he's going to score! Tell us when we're, tell us when we're good. All right. Go ahead, guys. Thank you. Sorry for the brief interruption there. Technical difficulties, but they're all fixed up now. 216 Sports Network making sure we have enough recording to finish the game here. Thank you, Ramel. Anderson taking out of his own end zone to the 15. And dropped at the 18-yard line. Yeah, it's a good kick return there. Made sure to get enough yards so he's not backed up against the end zone, but uh, got next to the sideline in case there was a fumble, which is very common on kick returns in Tecmo. Set up for a very exciting finish here in Tecmo Cleveland 2023 at the Cleveland Gaming Classic at the IX Center. This is Ultimate Weapon Ryan McKay on the mic with Tim O'Donnell. Disciple on color. Got the music in the background, the after party here at the Cleveland Classics starting up again. We're going to do our best to uh, to make sure you guys can hear us, but uh, this is part of the Cleveland Classic experience, all yep. of the tournaments and parties that are going on. 
So here we go. Run and shoot, Owen. It's a call play, and Megan is going to get dropped in the backfield. Second and 13. We got Nostradamus' kid in the stands here. He's got, we got a lot of fist pumps and, and exciting, exciting uh, faces and yells going on from him. Neither it's one of these great seat. competitors wanting to concede. Nice play there. I mean, he had Third the jump, 13. but sometimes on that play, they just go for the dive. Sims with the player two overthrow. That's why everyone wants to be player one. You don't get as many overthrows. You get a lot more luck, so to speak, with the passing, with the interceptions, and even with the fumbles, I would say. But on that one, the Bills got lucky there. That It's known as the player two blues and the Giants appropriately in blue. Yep. So here we go. Phil Sims dropping back. Third and 13. He's got some time. He's surveying the field. He's looking He's for Stephen Baker. Oh, He's he came got back. Baker! Baker with a leaping reception. The pulls tap. it down. And DPS Inside the 15-yard line. Nose First Adamus and 10. Tap off that Giants. Uh, he threw it deep because he decided to be Bennett uh, as a linebacker on defense. Uh, and so DPS decided, you know what? If you're going to be a 19 INT a linebacker, I'm just going to throw it deep. And it worked out for him. Phil Sims back to the run and shoot. Bill's trying to figure out how they want to defend it. Megan to the top. Time. Out of bounds. He was expecting run one. That's why he chose Conlon there, so that he could uh, get up there and still have a chance in case it wasn't. To the red gun. It. Sims. Going for the back. blitz. Oh, it's he's surprising. going for the touchdown right away. He gets it. He called run. My guess there, it looked like he called run. So Bottom of the guess. screen, Mark Ingram. Is that he did that intentionally to let him score because he knew he would so that he would have time on the on the drive that is, is about to happen to tie it up and hopefully waste as much of that clock as he can on the uh, – see, I, I don't know if he should have done that. You think he should have made him waste more time, maybe tried to hold him for the field goal there because it's still seven minutes yeah, left when I he mean, did that. With QB Bills and Andre Reid, all it takes is one chuck, yes, you know, does. but, but uh, we'll see what happens here. Yeah, so if he so he's going to have to score really fast and then play super aggressive, make Dan you know have to choose between bombing it or wasting time on the next drive so that then once again the game within the game thinking Nostradamus gets another drive after Dan's next drive so let's see how this works here so let's see what these what plays are called to determine kind of the mentality of what these guys are doing there is some thought to putting Thurman Thomas in at wide receiver as well yeah but we're too early too early for that um, because he's got on the 10 yard line he is bombing up though so I think he was so here we go. QB Bills out of zone end zone. The Red Gun Z looking deep for Andre Reed. Deep down the sideline looking for Reed. Oh, oh my! So close. Wow. Yeah. This and is once again, this is not an earthquake here in Tecmo Cleveland. Yep. Someone just bumped the camera. <laughs> Someone Everybody's hit the wire. okay here. We got All right, QB Bills dropping back. Coming Waiting right as up. long as he possibly Reed can, trying to go for Reed again. Tick, 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 tick. Oh, oh and it's an it's overthrow, overthrow, but no not interception. picked. Got another so the Bills are still alive. So Nostradamus here, down to the end. These two great competitors have fought hard, each only with one loss in the gold bracket. Did not call QB Bills, play. He's gonna get time's going to expire. There's a blitzer in his face. He gets away, buys himself some more time. Now looking for Reed, deep down the field. Can Reed pull it in? Reed, oh, no, he can't. Into double and coverage, again, and that's going to do it. DPS with the championship. Got a nice hug from the contestant. She likes to see that. No bad blood between these two. They've played a lot. That was a great game. Not great surprised game. to see DPS with the win, but um, it was a, a really good fight by Nostradamus to get that. Probably, uh, probably a little risky strategy to just let him score, but he knew. And Nostradamus knocking and DPS out. off in the first game. Heck of an effort to even get it to game two. And what a great finish. I mean, this game could have gone either way. It hung in the balance for a long time. And what a game to finish on, Tim. Bill's Giants, yeah. two of the best teams in the game. Absolutely. So yeah, These two have played in, I believe, a championship earlier this year, maybe at Kumite. Or I believe that's at the Detroit tournament. I'm not sure. I've never been to that one. But right. I think they played in the finals. Also with Fast Ed, I believe, we made it in that final. Uh, he was third place in this one. So he, he deserves a shout-out. He did great. Uh, so this has been a great tournament. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, I hope the music wasn't too loud. We started yelling <laughs> so you could hear us. I hope it wasn't 
two bananas. But, and uh, once again, thank you to Tom Jenkins for putting on the Cleveland Gaming Classic and having Tecmo Cleveland as a flagship part of it. And also for the 216 Sports Network with Romel Thorpe here allowing us to broadcast and use our equipment. Once again, there will be a link to cash out for donations for those of you that enjoyed the broadcast and want to contribute. Again, Ramel talked a little bit about 216 Sports and what they do. So again, thank you everybody for tuning in today. It's been a long day, but it's been a fun day at Techbo Cleveland. This is Ryan McKay, the Ultimate Weapon, signing off for Tim O'Donnell, Disciple. I'm thank out. you for joining us. We appreciate your guys' time. We hope you had fun watching the broadcast. Take care and God bless.